The Twisted Bow, one of the most powerful weapons in old school RuneScape. The weapon deals massive amounts of damage to anything with a decent magic level, which happens to be most of old school RuneScape's bosses. With its power though, comes the price, which is almost 1.4 billion as of recently. After selling a Twisted Bow to complete the 0 GP to Tumic and Shadow, I want to start again from 0 GP and earn enough money to afford the Twisted Bow and take on the challenge mode Chambers of Zeric. This is 0 GP to Twisted Bow. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 1 of my new series, 0GP to Twisted Bow. For those who watched my 0GP to Tumic and Shadow series, it is going to be the exact same rules as last time. I can use of trainables, except for the ones that can be broken, those of which I will have to fix in order to be used. In my last series, I also obtained a Twisted Bow very early on and that changed the direction of my series, and it's also something I want to avoid this time, so I will also be excluding raids from this series. Other than that, I have obtained a Invernic Defender, since I didn't have one last time during that series, and I will have to purchase an Invernic Hilt in order to use the Invernic Defender, so there are no freebies there. With that out of the way, let's get started making some money with 0 GP in my bank, as you can see here. It does say 192 mil bank value, but that is all in just skilling outfits, so if I take these out here, which I obviously won't be selling or anything like that, my bank value is at 0. At the start of my last series, I used a skilling moneymaker, specifically thieving, in order to get some starter cash in order to progress in the account. And I think I want to stick with a skilling moneymaker, as you don't really need a lot of money in order to get into it. And for having absolutely nothing in your bank, they actually make a decent amount of money. So specifically what I want to focus on this time is runecrafting. So I went ahead and grabbed the runecrafting outfit out of my bank and I'm going to go ahead and head upstairs in Lumbridge and I believe there is a bronze pickaxe spawn and let's go ahead and pick that up. So you probably know where I'm going with this. I made my way to the Lumbridge swamp, went ahead and entered the shed. Since I do have the Lumbridge Elite Diaries, I do not need myself a Draman staff. And then we're going to go ahead and head over to the fairy ring. We are going to go ahead and head to the Arceus library. Now I believe there is a chisel spawn where you mine the essence block over here so let's just make sure we can get that chisel and there is the chisel now that i have a chisel and a pickaxe i can go ahead and start mining some essence i think i'm just going to do one inventory of blood ruins and then head to the grand exchange so i can at least upgrade my pickaxe but i do want to stay here at least a little bit to make a little bit of starter cash and here is the first inventory of blood ruins I accidentally just muscle memory clicked the bind blood altar so there is a little stack of essence but we can go ahead and grind these up and get a little bit more blood ruins and there we are, 358 blood runes, which uh, amounts to 70k, while blood runes are not as worth as much as they used to be, but that is still a decent amount of starter cash, so I actually do want to go ahead and sell that on the Grand Exchange. And now we have 70k to play with, and I think what I want to do is just go ahead and spend most of the money, and I want to actually buy a blood essence. If you don't know what this does, it basically doubles the amount of blood runes you get while crafting blood runes, so yeah, I do want to continue that. And from what I noticed, it seems like the pickaxe you use mining the essence doesn't actually matter. So I think I'll stick with the bronze one and we'll just bank this 10k because it's a little bit of profit made there. So I think I'm just going to stay here until I use up all 1000 charges of this blood essence. I'll have the 100% boost from the blood essence and the 60% boost from the whole Guardians of the Rift outfit, which should hopefully supply me with a fair amount of blood runes, hopefully enough to make a very big chunk of change, and then we can move on to our next moneymaker. Okay, I've used up most of the blood essence and with this little craft right here, their blood essence falls apart, drained of all the energy. We got 4.5k blood runes plus whatever I get from these blocks right here. And we end with 4, 6, 5, 9 blood Let's go ahead and throw that into the price checker. Almost 1 mil. Not too bad. This took around 2 hours, I want to say. At least I've been online for about 2 hours, so we'll go off that. So let's head to the Grand Exchange, sell this off, and buy a few essential items. Let's see how much money we got from all of those blood ruins. Looks like just over 900k, so that is great. There are two purchases I know for sure I want to make with this money, and that is going to be the construction cape and the crafting cape. If you're not aware, the construction cape gives you infinite teleports to your house, and the crafting cape gives you infinite teleports to one of, if not the closest bank uh, to a teleport. So yeah, those two items are very good, so let's go uh, make up my way over there. There is the construction cape purchase, probably one of, if not the most OP item in the game, other than, I guess, the max cape, since it has the construction cape inside of it. Now let's go ahead and head over to the crafting guild. I do think it's quite weird. I still need a brown apen to enter even though i'm already 99 crafting but it is what it is let me just go ahead and get that skill cape so i won't have to have the apron anymore and i'll have infinite teleports to a very close bank there we are those two purchases now let's move on to our next money maker 
Sticking with the theme of skilling and more specifically rune crafting, I think I actually want to try out crafting some Ratherins. According to the wiki right now, it's like 2 mil an hour, which is absolutely insane. Of course, it does require the full outfit plus the colossal pouch, but both of which I have, so that's no problem. And it'll also require me to switch to lunars. I need like repair pouch and a few other items like the mythical cape. So let me go ahead and grab everything and get started with that. Okay, I think I've made all of the purchases that I need to. Went ahead and grabbed a mythical cape, a catalytic tiara to attune it to my hat of the eye. I've got my staff of air plus some runes to cast NPC contact to repair my colossal pouch, which I grabbed out of my bank, and an anti dragon shield because I believe on the way there there are a few dragons I will have to pass. Maybe I need some food, but for now I'm just going to keep it as is. Oh, and the one thing I did forget to buy is a pure essence, so let me uh, grab quite a bit of those. The buy limit for pure essence looks like it's 30k, so let's just buy out 30k. We may or may not use all of those. They cost 3 GP each, but we are about to turn it into a lot of Wrath Runes. Hopefully, uh, we should be making 2 mil an hour according to this. But again, I've not really done much Wrath Rune crafting, so I have no idea if the prices are accurate or if anything will even sell for that matter. But let's get started nonetheless. Here it is, the first inventory of Wrath Ruins. Let's go ahead and throw them all into the altar. 107 Wrath Ruins, which is worth about 21k. I mean, I got it here pretty fast. Uh, that does not seem like a lot of money, so I assume you just make a lot per hour. It looks like I have to make like 100 trips per hour to make 2 mil. So 100 trips per hour, I don't know if that is or isn't doable. It probably is, it didn't seem like it was that long a run. One thing I did forget though is to buy some stamina potions, so I'm going to head back to the GE, buy some stamina potions, and I guess I'll take you through a full run. A full run doesn't take too long, just grab the essence of the bank, teleport to the mist guild, and to the little dungeon below. Then I have to run past all the dragons into this little cave entrance right here, into the altar, craft the wrath ruins, and then once we do that, teleport back with the uh, mist cape. So I've only done a few runs of Wrath Ruins so far, but I think I kind of want to keep track of how many I'm getting per hour. So I've been logged in for 2 hours and 22 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and re-log. And then once I've been logged in for an hour of doing Wrath Ruins, I think I'll go ahead and show you how many Wrath Ruins I've crafted and see how much money we've made in an hour. I don't think I'm going to hit that 2 mil mark, but we'll see how close we can get to it. Okay, I've been doing Wrath Ruins for just about an hour, and that is a perfect time, Mr. Genie. It'll go ahead and put you on some agility XP. But more importantly, let's go ahead and head over to the bank and see how many Wrath Ruins we have. I have not peaked. Uh, it should be a little bit more than an hour since I did about three runs before the hour was over. And I believe my ruins are in this tab. 8,000. Is that more or less than I'm so, like, I, I have no idea if that's good, bad. Price check, 1.6 mil. Okay, so we did not hit the 2 mil mark. And... I guess about a few hundred were uh, pre, so about 1.6 mil an hour. That's still very good for room crafting, and still very good considering I started with basically nothing. So I think I want to do at least one more hour of these Wrath Ruins, as it is still very good money per hour. And we'll go ahead and sell them on the GE. Alright, finished about another hour of Wrath Ruin crafting, and let's see what we're at now. 1500 Wrath Ruins. I don't even know if that is more or less, or if we're doing really good it should be about 3.2 mil yeah i think we're about the same as we were before so not too too bad let's go ahead and sell it in the ge three mil is a lot of money seems like wrath ruins were selling a little under ge price and they actually did take a little bit of time to sell but nonetheless we have made three mil and with the 500k we got from the blood ruins earlier we're now up to 3.5 mil that is a very large sum of money considering i think i've spent around four hours so we've made almost one mil an hour since we started so far now the next money maker i want to go ahead and try revolves around mining and you could probably guess as there isn't too many mining methods that make a lot of money is going to be runite mining which i just have the level for and fortunately i have just enough cash to get myself a dragon pickaxe as i do believe they are around 2.5 mil and they are a lot less than i thought they were i guess bloody bosses are really crashing the price of this thing that actually shocked me quite a bit <laughs> looking at the price there but 1.8 mil for a dragon pickaxe i've never thought i'd see the day that happened let me go ahead and get some mining gear including the Verak armor 4 from toby and Verak and Let's get started. I've got myself the Virok Armor 4, and I think the first place I want to try is there's supposed to be a mine right next to the Volcano Entrance, and that area is actually supposed to have four Runite Rocks. Since it does have four Runite Rocks, I imagine it is quite busy as I go in here. Here, I don't expect I see many Runite Rocks. Yeah, definitely a few people here, but I'm going to hop around and see if I can find some Runite Rocks here. If I can, awesome. If not, maybe we'll go to a different location. So after hopping on the Elf Mine just a few worlds, I've noticed that they are all empty, which is no surprise as it's the only mine that has a four runite 
aura spawn but what's not too much worse is a three runite aura spawn here in the czar area and this is actually the first world i hopped to and we already have three open runite rocks so yeah if i'm able to find these like this i'm going to be very happy and i'm going to once again probably log out and then log back in and see how much runite ore i can mine in a single hour there's also a chance between this hour I may hop locations as there's not a 100% chance that all the worlds are going to have open rocks like this and if I just keep finding empty rocks I will definitely need to switch locations. I've been mining Ruin Ore for just about an hour now as you can probably tell I kind of have to hop so I can't really track it using the uh, in-game timer anymore so that is unfortunate. And you also notice I went to the Mist Guild. It turns out the Ruin Rocks at more old Wreck or whatever you want to call it uh, is quite uh, packed so I ended up uh, not finding too many worlds after that first one. So I went ahead and made my way to the myth guild as it still has two rocks and it isn't as crowded but i did find a uh person here who you cannot convince me is a real player as you can see here has like the minimum stats required in order to do dragon slayer 2 and has a hundred and twelve mining so that is 49 million mining xp and i think the best part of it all even with dragon pickaxe being as cheap as they are he was still using a rune pickaxe so that was uh quite interesting to say the least however in that hour it looks like we just got short of or my math is terrible and we got ourselves 61 runite ore and two sapphires just from the uh, mining process and if we go ahead and throw that into the price checker, that is about 700k in an hour. Yeah, that's like half amount we were making crafting wrath runes. But I do think I want to get this another hour. Even if it is not as good money as it is crafting wrath runes, it's still a different method. And it definitely is a lot more click intensive. You kind of click a runite rock and you kind of just sit there for a minute while it mines. So I'm going to give it another hour. Another hour done, mining runite ore. This time went a little better. We got ourselves two clue geodes, and the last one we just got a second ago, the easy clue geode. And I think I also got a medium one in the bank. And I also think I got more runite ore this time than I did last time. I think I had 61 last time. So if we go ahead and throw 61 into the bank, we got ourselves 92 this time. Yeah, that is quite a bit better. I just got very lucky if the world's plus the time at right now is like terrible time for everyone like no one's on currently so a lot luckier over one mil made that hour i'm glad i did do that second hour because yeah that's a very decent chunk of change definitely a lot better than 700k an hour but speaking of mining i was thinking about it one of the best money makers for scaling in the game is actually Zolcano, and you might not consider it skilling since it is a skilling boss, but it's pretty good money, and it's probably better money than Runite Ore, and since I'm on skilling this episode, I definitely think I should give Zolcano a try. I decided to sell off all the Runite Ore, so nice 1.7 mil there, and the reason is, is I do want to buy a region bracelet as it makes you region 2 HP per region instead of 1 HP. And I also decided to go ahead and grab an HP cape because it'll increase the region as well. With the region bracelet plus the HP cape, I should be regioning about 4 HP per minute, so not too bad. Now let's go ahead and get geared up for a Zolcano. Here we are, the first kill of Zolcano. I'm not even joking where I say everyone in this uh, room right here has died at least once during this kill, except for me. Uh, and there we are, our first kill. 17 runite bars, not too bad. That's a nice 200k. Plus all of the crystal shards we can go ahead and turn into crystal dust, I believe, and then make some potions with it for a little bit more money. But yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and do about an hour of Zolcano and see how much we make from that. One hour of Zolcano completed. And if we go ahead and check the loot tracker, it looks like we made a little bit more than one mil plus whatever the crystal shards are worth. Not too much money, but at the end of the day, I did kind of have to leave my four man for mass worlds because my four men's kept dying. So I wasn't getting too much money there. So I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and head to bed and then tomorrow hopefully get some actual good four mans going and make a little bit more than one mil per hour. There is another hour of Zolcano. This hour went a little better since I got nice three and four man teams and I MVP'd most of the three and four man teams and we got ourselves another 180k drop right here. Not too bad like I said so go ahead and throw up the price checker and this hour we got a nice 1.2 mil instead of the one mil. So yeah a little bit more money there. I guess I did throw the potions in there I didn't mean to but yeah you can show the loot tracker. 1.2 mil and I actually kind of enjoy Zolcano quite a bit so I think what I'm going to do is maybe do another two hours of Zolcano. I know I've been doing like two hours of every activity and this is the second hour of Zolcano but like I said I enjoy it quite a bit plus there's a chance of getting lucky and getting that crystal tool seed which is about 10 mil right now so yeah getting myself a chance at that. Well, there is the first death of the uh, entire run. I don't know what that was. It felt like I lagged there a little bit, but it is what it is. That is definitely a death. 
there we are that is another two hours of Zolcano for four hours of Zolcano total unfortunately no uniques or anything like that but I will say the loot was quite good these last two hours if we go ahead and check the loot tracker you'll notice I have 5.7 mil from four hours instead of like the one mil per hour I was getting so yeah if we just go ahead and throw everything into the price checker you see here 3.4 mil let's get rid of the potions as well so it's a little bit closer to 3.3 mil but that is very good that means 1.7 mil an hour in the last two hours very very good even higher than like what the rates show on the wiki so i don't know if it's just because i'm getting mvp every game because my uh smithing level is 96 and my rune crafting level is 95 so my imbued tapper is doing a lot of damage or i'm just getting insanely lucky whatever the case very very happy with volcano and so happy i think i might come back here later in this series just to go for like maybe the crystal tool seed or something like that it is still very good money compared to a lot of money makers in the game and i just enjoy it quite a lot let's just go ahead and sell off everything we've earned so far including the dragon pickaxe and the region bracelet because our next money making method i am going to need a lot of money I've gathered pretty much everything in my bank that I can sell. So if we go ahead and throw it in the price checker, it looks like we are just short of 10 mil, but that is just the price checker. Let's go ahead and throw it in the GE and see how much we actually make. All right, I've sold off anything. And I just want to highlight once again, the price of Dragon Pickaxe. 1663 is what I'm getting back. And I bought it for 1.8 and I thought I got a steal there. Man, this item is crashing fast. I assume it's just because of the worldy bosses, but man, it is uh, sad to see because I love Dragon Pickaxe. But go ahead and collect all. We now have 9.6 mil. Not too, too bad. I do also have the clue scrolls that I got from the clue geode earlier. So the easy casket and the medium casket. There is some potential for some loot here. So it's going to open the easy. Not too much. And the medium uh, collection log. I think that's actually pretty rare. The gold elegant is actually uh, decently rare on a, a medium clue. But yeah, not worth a whole lot. To make myself a little bit more money, I went ahead and did my daily battle stuff, so you see here, so that gets me a little bit closer to the 10 mil mark, but lucky for me, I kind of just forgot that I did have the little bit of cash that I made earlier from, I don't even remember where I got this cash from, maybe like selling the Runeite ore or whatever, but either way, there's an extra 700k there, so if we go and put that in our cash stack, we have made over 10 mil so far, about 10.5 mil, and we are not done yet. I do want to try one final moneymaker, which I mentioned I will need some cash for, and that is going to be smithing. And particularly, there's actually two moneymakers I want to try with smithing. One, I don't think is going to work at all. It's kind of a test, but we can try that out later. But the first one I want to try is just making runite bars and blast furnace. It's about one mil per hour if you have enough equity to keep it up for an hour, but I think I have enough to keep it up for about 20 minutes. So yeah, I don't know how this is going to go, but let's just go ahead and buy as many bars as we can afford to make. Plus, I need the uh, GP to put into the coffer at Blast Furnace. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and make some uh, buy offers. All right, I made some purchases for Blast Furnace, 720 Runite Aura, 2880 Coal, which should be 720 Runite Bars. And I bought some Stamina Potions because I'll need them there. Plus, I have enough cash, plenty of cash actually, for the Furnace fees at the Blast Furnace. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. This should only last me about 20 minutes, unfortunately. But still, let's see how much money we can make in that time. Sort of a fail, but I just noticed after starting doing this, I actually do not have a coal bag in my possession. And to make that one mil an hour that you need for the runite, you kind of need a coal bag. Uh, yeah, without the coal bag, I am going to make probably half of what I've been making earlier because I basically do two, two trips in one with the coal bag. So yeah, this is only going to be about 500k an hour and kind of a fail money maker. So yeah, this is going to take me about 40 minutes to only make around 500k. There we are about 30 minutes later according to my in-game timer. We have used up all of the runite ore and the coal. Uh, yeah, that definitely took a lot longer than it should have and I definitely made a lot less money than I should have as well. I used about 40k in the coffer plus whatever we paid for the runite bars. Let's go ahead and head to the Grand Exchange. You guys know that feeling when you have a uh, plan in place and then you start following through with that plan and everything just kind of falls apart? Well, that's kind of me with smithing during this video, but it is what it is. We got ourselves 720 runite bars, and we're going to go ahead into our history. It looks like we paid about 8.6 mil plus the 40k. We'll call it 8650. And if we go ahead and price check our runite bars, we have 9 mil. So I guess we made 350k in about 35 minutes. That is not a good money maker. And I'm going to make it even worse because my idea was not to sell these runite bars, but to actually smith them into uh, rune 2Hs, which is actually a really good money maker. But the problem is I don't actually have the smithing level required, which is 99 smithing. So my uh, brig brain idea was to actually buy some Kovac Grok since it gives you a uh, plus four smithing boost. The only problem is they are worth a lot of money and I don't even think I'll recoup the amount needed. Uh, even with preserve on and everything to like smith enough rune two h's to yeah make the money back from this but i'm gonna go ahead and give it a try because never say never right 
All right, here goes nothing. I went ahead and bought one of the Kovacs Grog for about 33k. I got the full Smith's outfit, the Mkando hammer, Runite bars in the inventory, and this is the closest anvil to a furnace. And then let's go ahead and throw on preserve. And yeah, let's see how much we can make within a single Kovacs Grog. Well, my time ran out as a 99 smither, so we managed to smith 54 rune 2 H's. I have no idea if I did good or bad, but let's go ahead and price check it. We were at like just over 9 mil without uh, smithing anything, and we went up about 20k, and the grog is about 35k, so we lost 15k with that moneymaker. That was an amazing moneymaker. I am so glad I did that. Even after failing those smithing moneymakers, we did still make a decent amount of money, and I went ahead and sold off the rune 2 H's and the runeite bars. So let's go ahead and collect. And in total in this episode, because I am ending it here, it looks like we made 10 mil and 565k. Or I mean 10 mil 656k. I am still like out of it because of the smithing moneymakers. That was an absolute fail, but it is what it is. In between episodes, I decided to continue working on mining a bit while editing the video and managed to scrape up 30 unidentified minerals and 74 golden nuggets. Along with those items, we got some ores, which ended up being worth a decent amount of money. As you saw between episodes, I did a bit of mining at the mining guild and the motherlode mine, and here is the loot from all of that. I want to start this episode by going ahead and selling off all of it, including the dragon pickaxe I bought in order to see where we stand. Went ahead and sold off everything, looks like we got a nice 3 mil there, plus the cash stack we got from the last episode, so we're up a couple mil from the last episode, looks like 12.1 mil. Plus I went ahead and did the clue scrolls I had in the bank, we've got the beginner clue for 1k and the medium clue for 4k. Another elegant piece which is 2 times rarer than ranger boots, but hey, it is what it is. 2 times rarer than ranger boots and it doesn't even sell for 1 GP. In this episode, I want to focus on money making in the wilderness, a dangerous place where anyone can attack you, but sometimes you have to risk a little money to make a little money. The first place I want to start in the wilderness is the green dragons. Specifically, I want to focus on the clue scrolls they drop. Green dragons do have a hard clue drop rate of 1 in 128, but since they are located in the wilderness, you can also bring an imbued ring of wealth to double the drop rate to a 1 in 64. I do also have the Wilderness Elite Diaries completed, so the dragons will drop noted dragon bones, so the trips will be quite extensive, so let's see how much money we can make. That I was going to get geared up for green dragons, I just instantly went to the GE and typed in green dragons. It's like when I'm looking up how to cook something, I go to like, how to cook a steak OSRS at the end of it. This is not exactly what I'm looking for. I want to go ahead and purchase some barrel glow, so I figured I may as well record that. The only thing I need to do now is repair my infernal cape and my fire torso. Let's go ahead and do that here at Purdue. It's going to cost a decent amount of money, but we have over 10 mil now, so we're still doing fine. And one thing I would like to purchase, I did end up going with an abyssal whip for green dragons right now, but a Vigora's chain mace isn't too much out of the question. It's about 13 mil at the moment, so I am just short of that. So when I get enough money to purchase one of those, I will probably go ahead and do so. And one thing I also want to work towards while I'm here at the green dragons is 99 attack and it might not seem very relevant but since I have an Avernic defender and I don't have any dragon defender having a 99 attack skill cape will give me infinite warrior guild tokens to get my dragon defender back real easy. And on our first kill we go ahead and got ourselves the looting bag. I was thinking about buying the looting bag pouch whatever you can buy from the uh, grand exchange but it ends up the pouch or whatever is worth 40k and in reality you get a looting bag in one of your first few kills anyway so it would just been a waste of money. One other small thing that the Ring of Wealth does, other than giving me double the rate of hard clues at a 1 in 64, is whenever I get a coin drop from these green dragons, it will just automatically put it in my inventory. So another small thing that the Ring of Wealth is good for. Okay, there is the first hard clue scroll from green dragons. Not too bad, so let's go ahead and head out of here and complete our first hard clue scroll. The first hard clue scroll completed, and I think I'm going to stack up the caskets until I get myself 99 attack from green dragons and see how many we get from there. Before we head back to Green Dragons though, one thing I remembered is that they have recently changed the combat achievements and I believe if we go ahead and head to wherever panel this is and we go into our combat task, we have rewards to collect from Gommel and specifically the hard combat achievements will increase your chance of getting a uh, hard clue scroll from I think a 1 in 64 with the Ring of Wealth to a 1 in 60. Not only do we get that 1 in 60 hard clue drop rate, but we also get some antique lamps which means more agility XP, which is great for me. Bro, what is this? Hope this fills you up. Stale baguette? Like, oh, oh, what? Uh, I guess that, how much money is that nowadays? Uh, I guess I can't figure it out. Let me go to the bank. An extra 500k just by talking to the sandwich lady? We will take that every day of the week. 
got my second clue score and I figured since it is a woody step I may as well go ahead and purchase some royal sea pods so now I have those for some level 30 teleport I think I'm on my fourth hard clue scroll now and talk about a perfect clue right here next to the green dragons that's what I'm talking about and there we are level 99 attack which means I am done with green dragons and I can start training defense as it's the only combat stat other than prayer I don't have to level 99 and we can finish up here and go grab that skill cape before we grab the skill cape though, I may as well show the loot from all of that. It looks like we got just over 5 mil, but that does include the stale bag get, which I got quite lucky on, I can't lie about that. We also got ourselves 19 Roy caskets, and I do want to open those, but before we do, I think I want to go for the Dragon Defender first, since the Cyclops in the underground basements actually have a chance of getting a hard clue, and you know, get a nice 20 hard caskets would be kind of nice. There we are, the attack skill cape. I've actually never had an attack skill cape and I think it's one of the coolest one and that has a very, very cool emote. Let's go ahead and show that off here. That is not the correct emote I was looking for. But yeah, the nice attack emote. I've always been jealous of people who've had it back in the day when I used to play in old, old uh, RuneScape days. Very nice to have this for myself and then the effect gives you infinite warrior guild tokens. So we'll go ahead and get ourselves that dragon defender. But before we do, we may as well make some upgrades since we do have 10 mil. Can go ahead and buy myself, I guess, like an obsidian shield for some strength bonus, dragon boots and so on and so forth. Here are the upgrades I decided to go for. Didn't spend too much money as I do want to spend the rest of this money later on. And I will also sell off all of the money that I made from the dragons later. But uh, first, I want to see if I can go ahead and get that 20th hard clue scroll. Okay, there we are, the dragon defender that did not take very many kills at all. Definitely less than 100. 46. I am very happy with that. 46 for the dragon defender. So I can go ahead and sell this shield off and continue. I went ahead and sold the shield off, but the more important thing I want to go ahead and do is unfortunately I did not get myself another hard clue scroll, but we have 19 caskets to open, so let's go ahead and open those. Unfortunately, no master caskets from the 20 clue scrolls, but it looks like from those 20 clue scrolls, we made ourselves an extra 2 mil, so I'm glad I did those. Now that all that's out of the way, let's just go ahead and take the cash out of the bank and go ahead and sell off the entire loot tab I have here. And there we are, we've got everything sold, so we'll go ahead and collect all that. 16 mil, how much extra we got on that? 16.6 mil, not bad at all, and I didn't even end up selling a lot of items like my whip or my dragon boots or anything like that. So still, that is a lot of money to play with. And what I really wanted to buy with this money, and I don't know if I have enough money to buy it if I can actually spell, I think it's Ursign Chain Mace. It is 13 mil, so we do have enough money to afford it. And that is what I want to invest in because this episode is going to be focused around the wilderness. So let's go ahead and buy one of the most powerful wilderness weapons, the Ursign Chain Mace. Got insta bought, and we have three mil to play with. And what I'm going to buy with that money is another item that you can get from the Rev Caves, or at least half of it, the Amulet of Avarice. So that kind of tells you where I'm going with this. We are going to head to the Rev Caves. And it's going to be very risky because I'm going to be risking my Amulet of Avarice. But with great risk comes great reward, so let's go ahead and get geared up for the next activity we're doing in the wilderness, which is going to be Revenants. This is the setup I'm going to go with Revenants with. I think I want to try Revenant Orcs to start out with. They're around the level 30 wilderness, so if I do start getting attacked, I can should be able to teleport out easily, but we'll see how that goes. I am risking quite a bit of money here since I am going to be Skulled. As you can see, uh, that is without Protect Item. With Protect Item, I'm probably risking over a mil, and that is a lot of money for me right now. I do not have a lot of money in the bank, probably like 20 mil total, maybe Maybe even less than that if I sell everything. So yeah, this is a lot of money on the line here. But like I said earlier, you got to risk money to make some money. I actually just got into the cave and as soon as I get here, I know this is an actual Revenant uh, Maledictus. I think this is a boss that has like a guaranteed drop. So yeah, we are definitely going to kill this thing. And I'll try to kill any Maledictus I see as long as they're not too uh, far into the wilderness. And I've actually never killed this thing, so I have no idea how it's going to go. I don't know if this guy is going to try to PK me. Yeah, I have, I have no idea what's going to happen. This guy apparently recognizes me. Pog. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and teleport out a nice 500k uh, drop. We will take that every day of the week. And yeah, that was the first Maledictus kill. And I think this like skull makes me do more damage or something like that. I'm still very new to revs. As you can see, there's Revenant after there. Now that I've gotten that Maledictus kill all the way, I do think I just want to camp here at the Revenant Orcs as I think they have a decent drop rate for the stuff and maybe using like a Magic Short Black Axe is using is better. I don't really know what the uh, best thing to use here is. But yeah, the Revenant Orcs, probably the decent place to stay. And I do want to stay until I get a unique that is not from Maledictus because that was kind of a freebie. 
All right, I had enough of this guy. This guy's taking all my kills. I'm, I am, I am actually going to attack back with my uh, chain mace. And there we go. We asserted our territory. These revenant orcs are mine. Now I don't actually have any live commentary for this clip here, but another maledictus spawns, so of course I go for it. And unfortunately, someone does to come and try to attack me. One thing I did learn from doing Revenants in this video is for whatever reason Jagex added some kind of combat delay in revs to teleports. It's sort of like deadman mode and I have to be honest, I am not a big fan of it at all. I am definitely biased while saying this because I am trying to escape the PKRs, but at the same time, due to the delay, it's basically impossible for me to escape some PKRs and you'll see that here along with something else that happens. After dying and losing 1.2 mil, it definitely sucked. My first thought was that maybe, just maybe, the Ancient Totem would still be there since I did die shortly after getting it, but I did immediately run back to the Rev Caves and I did not find it, so unfortunately that is a 1.2 mil loss. I had to go ahead and sell the Totem, but I had enough money to reafford the Avarice plus the Ether I need for the Earth Sign Chain Mace again. We're not going to give up after one death, that was very unfortunate, don't get me wrong, but we're going to continue. I did get attacked again after returning shortly after, but luckily this time I was able to escape. We managed to escape from that orc trip about 30 minutes and we made 900k, nothing too great. We didn't get any uniques, but we can probably do a little better, but that definitely helps with the 1.2 mil loss we had. One thing I did notice from those two PKers, the one that did kill me and then the one that got very close, was they were pretty much catching every freeze. So I think switching from Proselyte to Black Dragonhide was probably going to be a good decision. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Another successful trip at the Orcs, and this time we are hauling home about 1.1 mil in loot. So yeah, we are in the profit zone now. After returning to the Rev Caves, I did find myself a Maledictus, but unfortunately, yet again, after attacking the Maledictus, another PKR came. It definitely felt like pretty much every time I was on a Maledictus, a PKR came out of nowhere, which is very unfortunate, but it is what it is, and again, I ended up dying for the second time. Now, unfortunately, I will have to sell off some of my loot to get back the Amulet of Avarice, but I am not giving up on Revenants yet. I still believe there's a chance we can get something great. And there is something great, a nice 4 mil from the Revenant Orcs. Now 4 mil isn't a crazy crazy amount of money, but I am very happy with that. Makes up for all the deaths plus some profit. For like hourly profit, we're still doing pretty bad. We've been here maybe an hour and a half even with those deaths. So I, I guess we're doing okay. Probably like 4 mil made in those hours, which I guess considering the amount of money I have isn't bad at all. But let's continue. Uh, I definitely want more than just the medallion. I would like more than just the medallion, but honestly... If uh, nothing else happens, I'm pretty okay with this. 4 mil is very decent money. Fortunately, after that 4 mil drop, we didn't get pk anymore, and we were able to bring home a few 1 mil plus looting bags, like this one right here. But unfortunately, we did not receive any more uniques, and it was time to move on to our last money-making method. Sold off all the loot from revs, I got a nice 2.8 mil, plus I still have the medallion I didn't collect, so in total a nice 6.8 mil profit. That's actually not too bad, considering it was only about 2 hours in total, plus the amulet avarice I was able to buy back. So yeah, overall not terrible. Here is the loot tracker for those curious, only killed around 244 orcs. But again, like I said, we still made a decent amount of money even with those two losses I had. Now we're on to the wilderness bosses and the first one I want to go ahead and try is Calvaron. You could probably guess that since I am bringing my Salve Amulet, but one thing I don't want is to be Scold. I would like to bring my Dragon Defender, Barrow's Gloves, and don't have to worry about risking it. So in order to get my my Skull, I am going to go ahead and head to the Mist Guild. And if you're looking to get rid of your Skull real fast, just reminisce in the Pool of Dreams, refight Galvic, and then just die instantly and your Skull gets disappeared. Now I have a feeling a lot of these Wildy Bosses are going to be extremely busy, so I think my biggest goal for all of these Wildy Bosses is to just get 20 KC of all of them. Once I have that, I can go ahead and peek and figure out if people are in there, and it's a nice goal to have. 20 KC is enough to maybe get lucky, but it's not too much, so I don't have to grind for an obscene amount of time. 
And there is the first actual kill. That is actually 20 KC for me. However, I do want to get 20 KC for the video. So I guess let's just go for 40 KC to make it a nice round even number, maybe even 50. There is KC number 40. And I think I'll stop here because I'm getting very close to running out of charges in my weapon. And I also got myself an elite clue scroll. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that and move on to the next boss. We got the elite casket and inside of it, 246K. That's actually pretty decent for an elite clue scroll. A lot of onyx bolt tips, not too bad. Let's move on to the next wilderness boss. The next wilderness boss I'm going to go ahead and try is going to be RTO, but I've heard this one in particular is extremely camped. So let's actually see if we can find a world first. It only took about 50 world hops, but it seems like I have found a world. Let's just make sure we're not going to die here to RDO and it looks like we're already getting attacked so that's great. I couldn't find a world over at RDO so I decided to take it over to Spindle and hopefully I'll have some luck here. I guess we'll find out. Well speaking of luck it looks like that first kill I'm doing I got myself a treasonous ring. Nice 150k but yeah not really uh too great. And a few kills later, we get Onyx Bolt Tips. It's pretty funny that this is like not a unique drop. I think it's around 25 or something like that. And it is worth double the amount of a treasonous rank. But I guess that what happens when you bring items like the Web Weaver Bow upgrade and the Void Walker Gem from this boss. Here is Spindle Kill number 20, which means I can now peek into the lair. So yeah, I think I'll leave it here. It doesn't feel like these kills are optimal here using a uh, Vigorous Chain Mace, or I guess the new Ursan Chain Mace. So let's actually see if we can actually get into Callisto or the uh, RDO, I think is what it's called now. I do not have high hopes, but I want to at least give it a little bit. I cannot believe it. I actually found a world where I could do RDO. It is a miracle and a blessing. We will take it. This one was already damaged, but I will stay here as long as I can with this inventory. I'll even use up all my brews and die here if I need to. I really want to get this 20kc. I want to see how close I can get to it. Finally, 20kc at RDO completed, and our final loot is going to be 12,000 coins. This took a lot longer than you might think so. I know I did kind of jump cut for having something like 8kc and now I only have 20, so you'd think 12 kills or, or however many kills I had to do wouldn't take a long time. But RDO is probably the most packed I have ever seen. It feels impossible to find a world at RDO. And I am just very thankful I found enough time in between worlds and enough whatever gaps in between people banking or whatever where we've got 20 RDO KC and I don't plan on going back anytime soon as long as it's as busy as it is. It is absolutely crazy. Let's go ahead and show you guys the loot from the three wilderness bosses I ended up doing. I didn't do too many kills as you saw there, but even with the small amount of kills I did, I actually made quite a bit of money if I open up the sidebar here. Only 15 RDO made 600k, 11 spindle made 666k, that's a little spooky there. And then the 21 Calveron I did made almost 1 mil, and I guess with the Elite Clue Scroll it definitely did make over 1 mil, so not too bad there, not too bad at all. So I want to go ahead and sell pretty much all the loot I made in this episode. I was selling it off as I was going, so I do have the 8.4 mil cash there. But I guess this is like the loot from the wilderness bosses and probably want to sell off all my supplies and probably a decent bit of my gear as well. I think for now, I'll go ahead and keep the Ursine Chain Mace as I might want to sell it off on a specific price. And I actually think I do want to, you know, use it for a thumbnail for the video and all that. So yeah, I'll hold on to that for now. But we'll sell off everything else and we'll see how much money we made in this episode. We actually made probably more than you think we did. After selling off basically everything in my bank, this is pretty much everything that I kept. We are left with, it looks like 11 mil. I think I still had a few offers I had to complete. If we uh, go through that, examine the cash stack. We are now at 11.7 mil. But of course we have the chain maze. We have all these items here. So if we go into the price checker, looks like we started this episode with around 10 mil and we end this episode with a nice 27 mil that is a 17 mil increase this episode that is very nice that is very nice indeed i am super happy with the progress that we made in this episode nothing too crazy I, I know i could definitely go for higher heights but at the same time i never got any insane uniques i did get the trees in this ring which isn't worth a whole lot from venonatus and i did get the four mil totem from revenant orcs which is a still a very decent drop but it definitely could have been much better i also ended the last episode with the goal of reaching 100 mil in this episode so let's give it our best shot Hello everyone and welcome to episode 3 of Zero GP to Twistabo. One thing I do want to go ahead and start this video off is selling the Ursine Chain Mace. I don't think it's going to go up and I do think it has a very good chance of going down. So getting this out of the way is probably a good thing because if I just keep it for a long period of time, I imagine it's going to go down. As you can see, it doesn't even suffer 13 mil here. 
With that out of the way, we have close to quarter of 100 million, and what I want to start this episode with is buying myself the Dragon Pickaxe yet again. I bought and sold a Dragon Pickaxe in this series so far with three episodes, like three or four times already, so I'll try to keep the Dragon Pickaxe this time, but no promises. With the Dragon Pickaxe, for starters, I think I just want to go ahead and finish off the Golden Nuggets that I need for the Coal Bag, since I needed that in the first episode. I'm really close to it, and it is an AFK activity to do, so yeah, let's just get that out of the way. We finally have over 100 gold nuggets, so we can go ahead and trade Par Spectre Percy and get that coal bag that I was missing in the first episode so I can actually do a smithing moneymaker sometime in the future, but I am not going to be doing a smithing moneymaker in this episode. In this episode, you can probably tell I want to take on Zalcano, the mining skilling boss of old school RuneScape. I really enjoyed the small amount of time I spent there in episode 1 and was curious how well farming the boss for a long period of time could go. So okay, now pretty consistently gives over 1 million GP an hour, especially when you get majority of the MVPs, but also has the potential to drop the Crystal Tool Seed, an item that has seen prices over 15 million as of recently. Just to quickly go over how the Crystal Tool Seed is dropped, as it is done in a very unique way, every kill rolls a 1 in 200 to get the Tool Seed, if it rolls, then one person in the party will get the tool seed, with the person with the highest contribution being the most likely to get it. It is very similar to raids in that aspect. That is the only real unique worth anything, but with as much time as I would need to spend to earn 100 million GP from Zolcano, we're bound to see some crystal tool seeds and hopefully in my name. I went ahead and purchased the items that you see here. I got myself a region bracelet and the phoenix necklaces for healing, and then I have the serodolin brew and stamina potions, well, healing here, and then stamina potions are just needed because you run around on the volcano a lot. That is a decent investment, like 4 to 5 mil in there, plus the dragon pickaxe. So a okay amount of money to spend into this, but Zolcano is a lot of money. As you saw from the first episode when I did just a little bit of Zolcano. So in this episode, I really want to focus on Zolcano, and hopefully we can get ourselves a crystal tool seed as that would be the big money if we're able to hit that. I have made my way to Zolcano and for those curious I think I'll do all of my Zolcano kills in the Zolcano host CC so I'll be trying to do four man Zolcano and hopefully since I do have an extremely high smithing level and an extremely high runecrafting level it'll be very similar as it was in the first episode where I will get in the MVP quite a bit. For those who've never done Zolcano I do quickly want to showcase what it's about. You start the boss by mining Tephra the ore gained from the glowing rocks which are highlighted with an arrow. After gathering a decent amount of tephra, you head over to the furnace and refine the tephra. And finally, once it's refined, you head over to the altar to imbue it, so it can be thrown to deal damage to Zolcano's shield. Once the shield is down, you mine Zolcano in the center until she stands back up, and then you repeat the whole process 2-3 times, and then she'll be defeated. Small note, you'll know if you're the MVP or not by getting ashes and 3 crystal shards. Now, let's showcase our two weeks of Zolcano. Here's the first kill of the Zolcano grind. If we can actually get some hits in here, what is it going to be? Unfortunately, I did join this kill mid-round, so I'm not going to get the MVP here, but I'm still happy with two crystal shards, 155 steel bars for the first loot, and fortunately, I did remember to reset my loot tracker. Also feel like this is worth recording, the guy apparently that I am doing uh, this Zolcano with right now has 11,000, nearly 12,000 KC and has not gotten the pet. That is very unfortunate. I probably should not let that guy know that I actually have the pet at 50 KC on my other account. There is the first notification drop, a nice 25 Onyx Bolt tips, 200k there. And we actually got the MVP over the guy with like 12,000 KC. Uh, I kind of missed it, but I just got the Elite uh, combat achievement, perfect Zolcano. I've kind of just been AFKing here, and I guess that's the one for, like, just doing it perfectly five times in a row. We'll take it, and I think that's all the Zolcano combat achievements. Well, there's the first death on the entire grind. I don't even think I caught it there, but yeah, uh, I was not really paying much attention. There is the first drop I've seen at Zolcano. Someone got the Zolcano shard, Mr. Love Like Me. Of course, I'm the MVP, so maybe it should have been me, but actually, I think that drop is rolled independently. Honestly, I don't know too much. All I do know is that the Crystal Tool Seed does roll based on whoever has the most points. Here is KC number 100. Unfortunately, nothing from that. Really bad loot, too. Actually, it's probably one of the worst ones I've gotten. In total, it's like 40k, but we are making a lot of money. Just to update on the loot tracker, 44 for the video, but 100kc total, and 5.67 mil made. Here is KC number 100 of the video. I didn't get in much damage in this kill, so don't expect much loot, but I want to go ahead and show you guys what loot I do have from the 100kc. 
almost 13 mil made with 100 kc and no no this guy got his oh i guess it's an iron man so congrats to that guy but there is the first crystal tool seed I have seen, and it was my MVP too. You can see the three crystal shards. This guy got the uh, tool seed. Well, that's the first one I've seen. I guess he deserves the grats from me. But yeah, that was my MVP. Wait, he doesn't even have a dragon pickaxe. This guy has a tool seed, but no dragon pickaxe. Oh my goodness. I think the worst part about all this as well is I was doing this in a three man. Uh, I had this max guy here, and I had this group Iron Man here. And yeah, I had a really high chance of getting that. Didn't show up another volcano kill, but I'm also getting a mining level up to 88 mining and I guess 2175 total. Not too bad. First mining level from here and I pretty much went all the way from 87 to 88 mining here. So I will most likely be getting another level because I am nowhere close to finish with volcano yet. Just came back from eating and it doesn't really matter that much, but I thought it was something interesting. Someone got a volcano shard while I was gone and I was in this room right here. I thought you would have to be in the main entrance to see if someone gets a drop or not, but that's actually pretty cool that you can see it here. At least I know for sure that I haven't missed a crystal tool seed while I've been AFKing here because I probably would have seen it here. Oh, look how many steel bars I got last kill. 420. <laughs> oh, that, that was deserved for that terrible joke. AC number 456 is going to be 20 runei bars. It's a pretty good, decent drop. That's 250k there. But the most important thing about this KC, it's also number 400 for the uh, entire video. So that is a lot, even a wild drop there in the CC. But we are not done yet. As I did say, I want to get up to 100 mil. I missed the exact kill count, but we are now over 500 kill count for the video, as you can see here, 505. Unfortunately, we've only seen that one Crystal Tool C just shortly after 200 KC here, so very unfortunate that we haven't seen one yet, but we have not hit the amount of money that I'm hoping to hit. I think by 600 KC, we will have 100 mil total in the bank, so we'll go until then, or we hit ourselves the Crystal Tool C. And there is now 89 mining here from Zolcano. It really puts in perspective how long I've been here since I think at most I'm getting 15k XP per hour. Well, I didn't even realize I like didn't have my recording out. There it is, the second tool seed. This guy got it, and you know, it's my MVP yet again. Unfortunately, I was doing a five man, so I guess it was a uh, lower chance of me getting it. But man, I've been wanting this tool seed this entire time. We're closing in on 600k total and like 550 for the video. And yeah, that's the second tool seed I've seen now. Didn't even notice it because it wasn't mine. It only gives like a green text if someone gets it. And unfortunately with my MVP, we did not get ourselves a tool seed. No way. Another crystal tool seed very shortly after I saw the other one. And guess what? It's my MVP again. Oh my goodness. Congrats to that person. Bro, there is no way. What is going on? It's like this world. Like, just look, I scroll up here. It was like two kills ago, Crystal Tool Seed. And now another Crystal Tool Seed. Unfortunately, not my MVP. But still, you know, I've seen four Tool Seeds now. I guess I've only should have seen three and not a single one in my name. And this is a three man that we were doing right here. So a very good chance to see it in my name, even though I wasn't the MVP. Man, it's unfortunate. Very unfortunate. I don't know what the luck is recently, but yet another Crystal Tool Seed. I think that's like the fifth of the video now, and it's all coming right at the end, right when I'm about finished with the grind. Another MVP, for a man, and the 66 gets it, and I'm just going to guess with a name like that, it's either Venezuelan or a bot. Uh, it would have been real nice if I were to get that, you know, but... I guess I should stop complaining now, I'll be happy for someone else, and yeah, but it is very unfortunate to see five Crystal Tool Seeds, four of them being in my MVP. Oh, would you look at that? This is the first pet we've seen since we started. Uh, look, Black Oris just got themselves the small Kano pet. Very, very cool. I've been here for about 600 KC, and I guess like each pet is rolled individually per person, so I was bound to see one. But it's so weird, I'm seeing like one drop like on drop rate, and the rest of the drops are right here at the end, like the last 50 KC I need in order to reach the 100 mil mark. It's very interesting. It's like four tool seeds here at the end, and now a small Kano. It's, yeah, nothing more than just interesting. Here it is, the final Volcano kill for the video. Kill count number 600 if we get it in this down here. And it looks like we will. Are we going to get lucky here at the end? It looks like we are not, but that is okay. 190 steel or 190k worth of steel bars. That is a very good drop. And I do believe we have made that 100 mil. If we go ahead and check the KC counter, there you see we have... 600 kc done and 73.5 mil i think is just enough to put our bank in the 100 mil i'm gonna go and deposit everything and let's see where we're at
I've deposited everything in the bank and here is just the loot tab if you're curious there are a lot of items that aren't shown here like the runes I have a specific tab for those and I think like some clue items require certain bars and they might not be shown here either way uh, this is the majority of the loot and when we click this we'll know if we hit the 100 mil mark I don't know if we have or haven't there we are just above it 101 mil we have done it. The goal from the last episode, I said I wanted to hit 100 mil in this episode and we got 1 mil above it. Now, when I sell everything, because I'm going to be selling the loot tab, it definitely won't be 100 mil because there are some items I want to keep. Uh, most likely things like the obsidian legs, the dragon boots. Uh, that's not worth a whole lot. The abyssal uh, whip is worth a decent amount. But yeah, I definitely won't hit the 100 mil when I sell everything. But I do want to sell everything that I've gotten from Zolcano. Maybe keep something? No, I'll probably sell everything. I finished off selling off all of the loot from Zolcano. This 18.5 mil right here was from some of the smaller loot. And then we did get 1596 crystal shards, which can be turned into like crystal dust and used to make divine potions, which I might do in the future. I am only 92 herbal right now. So if I get 93 and then a botanical pie, you know, we could make some super combat potion divine ones. And that could be a decent way to make a little bit of money. But for now, I do just want to go ahead and show you guys. Here is everything that I sold off. This this is the major loot I already sold off all the minor loot as you can see here I did a little bit of price warring but yeah there's the uh, minor loot there and let's go ahead and collect and in total it looks like we made ourselves 71.7 mil so basically 72 mil from all volcano I'm a bit curious now if I go ahead and deposit all of it are we still above the 100 we actually are still above the 100 mil mark so it looks like I got pretty decent deals for what I had and even in just raw cash we're up to 93 mil because we had a little bit of cash from the last episode not bad, not bad at all. We are over that 100 mil mark on episode 3 of the series. In this episode, what I want to do for our moneymaker is Slayer. Specifically, a lot of Slayer. And what I mean by that is in the past, I've done a video focused on 24 hours of Slayer. I've done a video focused on 36 hours of Slayer. And I figured I always want to step myself up at least a little bit. So in this video, I want to do 48 hours of Slayer. That is a lot of Slayer. Either way, uh, to do some Slayer, I'm going to need some gear as my current melee gear consists of what an abyssal whip uh dragon boots and an infernal cape i definitely would like a little bit more just to start with i think i want to go ahead and repair all of my stuff that i broke for the start of the series that does not include the avernic defender because that is going to cost me 50 mil to repair because i want to be fair in that aspect but i think 93 mil is enough to repair at least the void and whatever else i'm missing I believe I've gathered up all of my broken gear. I think I just have to use it on Purdy here and repair all. That's 500k. Okay, that's a lot more expensive than I thought it would be. Jesus, I'm glad I waited at least until now to repair it. But man, uh, breaking items and repairing it is no joke. Now that I've gotten everything repaired, it's start to work on some imbues. So I think the salve amulet should probably be imbued. I definitely need to imbue the rings. And one thing I definitely need to imbue is the Slayer Helmet as well. I've gone ahead and purchased at least what I think is all I need to imbue, which is the Slayer Helmet and the three rings for each combat style. And I just have to say the price of the rings at the moment are up an insane amount. If I get a DK task, that is something I definitely should do. Like it is absolutely crazy. I assume because there's an upgraded version of the rings coming out, at least I think there's upgraded versions of the rings coming out and like look even the Sears ring this thing used to be like 200k is up to almost a mil now it is absolutely crazy now I am actually pretty excited to imbue these things because if you remember I believe in episode 2 when I went ahead and did green dragons I also went ahead and collected the hard combat achievements and in doing that I think that gives me half price imbues and I went ahead and unimbued my items before claiming it so I have a nice 6 million points and things are quite cheap to imbue after unimbuing everything. So I think even after re-imbuing everything that I unimbued, I'm going to have a ton of extra points to imbue some stuff in the future. Maybe I want different Slayer helmets, like the different colored Slayer helmets. Maybe I want to imbue more rings. Maybe something comes up that I'm missing that I haven't imbued yet. Either or, it only took like 2 million points to imbue all this, and I still have 4 million left. And these are like the essential items I think I need right here. So absolutely crazy. So glad I got the hard combat achievements done. On the topic of untradeables, we've already repaired all of our items. We've went ahead and bought and imbued the rings. And one other untradeable that is super powerful that I haven't gone ahead and done anything with is the Ferocious Glove. So I went ahead and purchased the Hydra Leather. And I think I need to head to Lithkrin or whatever to turn this into the Ferocious Gloves. And there we are. We have ourselves a pair of Ferocious Gloves. I've gone ahead and purchased some gear that I think I will need for Slayer. Now, it's not all the gear I'm going to need for every task, but I do already have a task, and that specific task is Black Demons, so I will want to do Demonics. So, I went ahead and purchased my Blowpipe as my ranged weapon, and for my melee weapon, I'm probably just going to continue to use the Whip, as it should hit pretty high. 
I am pretty much geared up for the demonic gorillas, but I will need more than just gear as I will need some potions and food. And I went ahead and just purchased some alchemy runes. It should be pretty nice for the task. And plus I needed the rune pouch anyway. So let's go ahead and collect all that. Now we should be ready to go. And I'm just going to go ahead and drop this on the ground since I do already have a rune pouch in my bank. And I feel like I don't really need to claim two rune pouches. Before we get started with Slayer, I do just want to take a moment to advertise the clan I'm in, the Cool Cats 2 from the group I am in days. We're still plenty active with Dovidus and Doug still actively in the clan and we have a lot of plans for the community in the near future. So if you are looking for a clan, I would love if you can join us by joining as a guest and then asking for an invite. Now let's finally get started with Slayer and I went ahead and added a timer on screen as you can probably see in the bottom right corner of the gameplay so you'll know exactly how long I've been doing the Slayer and know how long I have until I've completed the 48 hours. Still haven't gotten anything from Demonic Gorillas yet, but there is some weird bug going on in this game. It seems like they turned everyone into Ultimate Iron Man. I cannot bank no matter how much I try. I can't even use the Grand Exchange. I have no idea what's going on. Like, I can play the game, I can put things on, but for some reason, I just can't bank. Hey, we got a hard clue scroll from our Demonic Gorillas. I think I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'll probably end up opening all of the clue scrolls at the end of the video, but yeah, I'll try to do every hard clue or any clue for that matter that we get. We almost finished with the Demonic Gorilla task, and unfortunately with 4 kills to go, we get ourselves a Ballista Spring. That is a decent bit rarer than what we're looking for, which would be the Zenite Shards, but yep, yeah, there it is. The first drop, and probably the only drop since only have 4 kills left. Alright, next task we have Dagonoths. That's exactly what I was looking for. I was just talking about how good the Dagonoths are. We're looking at the uh, ring prices because I said how much the rings are worth right now. 142 Dagonoths, it's a good chance of getting one ring, I, I suppose. Uh, I'll probably be doing all three Dagonoffs, so I will have to buy a few items, but yeah, let's get geared up for that. Now, I've had to spend most of my money, as you can probably see here, we're already down to 18 mil, but I've got a really good setup for DKs. As you can also see, we got ourselves the Tormented Bracelet, the Occult, the Trident of the Swamp with full charges. I had to recharge the Blowpipe, and I think I bought something else. I can't really remember too much, but either way, we do have a great setup. We also have the Blood Spells, so that way we can heal while we're down there, and I think this should be enough for one DK trip. So I don't even remember how many do I have on task, 142. That's actually not too many, so I do feel like I can do this all on one trip. Well, this is the last kill of the Dagonoth task, and unfortunately, we have gone the entire DK's task without getting really anything interesting. I guess the most interesting drop is that hard clue scroll. We got ourselves a Dragonstone, a Seer Cole, two Archer Helmets. We even got some like Spine Chaps and other stuff, plenty of Feather Drops, which are 1 in 128s, but yeah. Not a single ring, not even a warrior's ring, and not even a ring of life of all things. We've had some really bad luck at the tasks we've had, though I'm going to be honest, the tasks we have have been pretty good. Dagonoth Kings, Demonic Gorillas, unfortunately no real uniques from either of them. What we got next? Necreals. That's a barrage task, and I think you actually profit or at least break even on these. Good Slayer XP, maybe Superior, could get lucky there. Didn't end up needing too much for the Necreal task, but we've got ourselves a Necrearch here, and it looks like we just get ourselves the guaranteed totem piece. Another Superior Necrearch, what are we going to get from this guy? Just a totem base, but that is a complete totem from this task, so we will take that for sure. Slayer task completed. Unfortunately, we did only get those two Superiors, but we did also get two Hard Clues, and I guess we won't know what those are until we complete the 48 hours, and you may have saw that, like, Sometimes I do pause the timer and that is just because I do my clue scrolls and I don't like the timer to run while I'm doing clue scrolls to make it fair. Next task is Grotesque Guardians and I am not a huge fan of Grotesque Guardians so I'm just going to go ahead and do three of them, get that boss task, get that extra 5000 XP. There we are, the three Grotesque Guardians completed. Well, I'm not going to complain about that. 201 Necreals. We got our first Necriarch of the task, and we're just going to get the guaranteed totem. Very close to being finished with the task, and we did get ourselves a second superior, so two superiors in each task. Can't really complain about that. Unfortunately, no loot, though. Like, we're getting really lucky because we got ourselves our third superior of the task with only six kills left. What are we going to get from this guy? Nothing too crazy, but we do get a hard clue scroll, so yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Gargoyles. At least it's the Slayer Tower. Actually, I think it's like the only place you can get them anyway, but... I mean, gargoyles are okay money and it's chill, I guess. I wasn't really going to record any of this task because you can't get too much interesting from the more gargoyles. I guess I could get a superior and that's worth recording, but I'm not even halfway finished the task and I've already gotten five brimstone keys. Like, that's actually crazy. I think like each brimstone key is about 100k each, maybe slightly more, maybe slightly less. Don't exactly remember the exact amount, but that is a lot of money just for free from doing Konar tasks. Maybe I should do Konar tasks more often, but for now we'll keep it every 10th task. 
And now after getting those five brimstone keys, we're getting back-to-back -back granite malls, which are about 200k each at the moment. We will take this luck from gargoyles. We've been pretty unlucky in all these other tasks, but yeah, gargoyles, they're showing up. We are now eight hours in, and after a very eventful gargoyle task, we have ourselves cow fights next. I'm probably just going to cannon and get through this task real fast, so don't expect much loot. Decided to do the little cow fights, and as expected, it was a very uneventful task. What do we have up next, Duradel? We have ourselves some cave kraken. This is actually a task that I've recently unblocked. It is great money, pretty slow Slayer XP per hour, but like I said, great money, and that's what we're focused on. I made a few more purchases for this task specifically, including full carols, uh, eternal boots, and the Elitinous Ward, which means my cash tech is now under 10 mil, but that is okay because Kraken, like I said, will make us a lot of money. There we are, Kraken task completed. Unfortunately, a very uneventful task, as most of our tasks have been. I think the most eventful thing was I was like two kills away from killing the Kraken and I ran out of Trident charges, didn't end up recording that because yeah, just not too special. Almost did, how many kills? 259 kills and not any drops. That's kind of unfortunate. Well, now we have 178 fire giants. Can't really expect much from this. I guess I'll just AFK this task real fast. There is the fire giant task completed. Obviously nothing too special from there, but what are we going to get next from Duradel? Hopefully we can be a little lucky. We're going to grab ourselves Calphite. So yeah, just a quick task. Got through that Calphite task pretty much as fast as I can. Now, hopefully Duradel can give me something decent this time. Necreal as well. First superior of the Necreal task we're going to get from this guy. We got ourselves just the guaranteed totem base. Honestly kind of lost track, but I think this is superior number two of the task. Uh, yeah, again, I lost track, but maybe we can get something here. Yeah, that's nothing. We got ourselves our third superior i believe but we also have a 96 slayer i was hoping maybe i get something with the drop of 96 slayer but 96 slayer that means we're three levels away from 99 we've completed the task of 310 necreals with the bracelet of slaughter not too bad duradel vampires okay this one has potential i've done a lot of vampire tasks in the past as you can see i have them extended you have the chance of getting the Blood Shard, which is worth a lot of money. If I remember correctly, I got a Blood Shard in episode 1 of the Tumic and Shadow series. I think I got duplicate because I was doing thieving. But I've never gotten one from like actually killing vampires, and I feel like I've AFK'd them for such a long time. Never got any. 250, that's a decent chance of getting it. Ah, oh, look at that sight. Look at that beautiful sight. I knew it. I knew today, or this task, would be lucky. Finally, our first big drop of the entire Slayer grind so far. Maybe this is the point where our luck turns around. Very early on in the task, like 20 kills in, we got ourselves the Blood Shard. Absolutely beautiful, a nice 6 mil right there. As Gex says right here, lovely drop. Almost finished of the Vampire task, but we are actually about to get a defense level. Only 3 left on task, but this is the second defense level of the video, up to 93 defense. Uh, I think we got 92 very early on in this video, and now we're only 6 levels away from 99. With the vampire task out of the way, what do we have next? Duradel. More gargoyles. Remember how interesting the first task was? Hopefully this one will be equally, if not better, as interesting. Another gargoyle task complete. This one was not as eventful as the last night, a single superior, but as all gargoyle tasks, they're just pretty decent money. Here's a task worth getting excited for. Your new task is to kill Cerberus. Man, I don't know if to choose a large amount because Cerberus is actually good money, or should I choose a small amount because it's a boss task so I can get through it fast? We'll go for a large amount. 50 Cerberus. It's a decent chance of getting something decent. Just kill number 50 the task, that means the task is over. Unfortunately, again, pretty uneventful, nothing too special. I don't know what we got next. We have ourselves Smoke Devils. I, I'm not sure if I want to do Thermi. I think Thermi is actually better money, uh, but the normal Smoke Devils are better XP. So yeah, I guess we'll do some Thermi. Well, I am almost finished of the task, but there is our first drop. I was about to complain that we've gotten nothing this entire task, but you know what? An occult necklace, it is not worth the most, but it is the most common drop you can get here. And you know what? It's been worth a little bit more nowadays. I remember these things used to be like 200k each, 500k each. That's acceptable. That's a nice drop. What do we have from Konar? We have fire giants on the island of souls. Also, this person just got a uh, Mystic Hat Dust. That's pretty rare. Congrats to them. And that's the Fire Giant task completed. And unfortunately, with that kill there, we went the entire task without getting a Brimstone Key. Very different than our 110th, which I believe was Gargoyles, where we got like five Brimstone Keys. Well, back to Dirtle.
We've got Curry Ass up next. These are honestly just very consistent money. Can't really get lucky at anything. I guess the Superior Curry Ass, which look absolutely amazing. Could get a heart there. There is the Curry Ass task complete. Unfortunately, we did not get any Superiors. However, if you look at the timer, we are pretty much at the halfway point in the video. Again, unfortunately, the only real thing we've seen is the Blood Shard as far as like valuable drops. We did see like an Occult, which is 500k, I suppose. But yeah, very unfortunate first half of the 20 or I guess 48 hours. Hopefully the next 24 hours will be a little better. Starting the next 24 hours with a Worm Task. Task completed, unfortunately, no Dragon Harpoon, no Superiors, but we are now past that 24 hour mark. But I'm not too sure if I do or don't want to do that. I'm going to think about this for a little bit. I decided I am just going to go ahead and do spiritual mages here at the ancient prison and let's see how well it goes. As a good start of the task, we got ourselves a pair of dragon boots. Yeah, I think I missed the collection log there, but we got ourselves ancient ceremonial boots from these guys. I think I've already gotten the mask, so it's like two out of five pieces you can get. I kind of forgot that you can even get like the ancient ceremonial thing, so this is turning out to be a decent task. And there is the spiritual creature task completed. This one was very good. I actually enjoyed it quite a bit and made quite a decent amount of money in a decently short amount of time i did get very lucky getting three dragon boots uh, it's a one in 128 so i guess i should have seen one maybe two we have next duradel we have dagonoff so we have another chance at redemption at dagonoff's hopefully this time we should get ourselves some type of ring preferably archer ring berserker ring there we are the berserker ring i knew luck would turn around there is the Dagonoth task completed. Super happy that we were able to get ourselves a ring this time. One of the better rings too, the Berserker ring. Didn't see anything else that task, but yeah, honestly, one ring per task, and especially being one of the better ones, I am perfectly okay with that. Next up, it looks like we are going to have an Aviancy task. I'm going to take a minute to think about this one, because I'm not sure if I can do Armadale. Uh, what's the best way to do it if yeah I, I have a lot of things i need to think about i think i'm going to do avnc this time to get ecumenical keys but if i do get an avnc task in the future i will definitely do criara hey there we are we got ourselves the ecumenical key that means it is a guarantee next time i do get an avnc task i will be doing at least an orbital kill but that is if we get another avnc task because it did take this long for me to get my first one what's our next task going to be we have cow fights so a quick one there we did thermi not too long ago and we got an occult out of it towards the end of the task but we have not gotten anything except for occult so a good chance of money and i made a pretty decent amount of money like regardless of the occult anyway so a very nice task for money all the slay i've been doing we're gonna get yet another defense level up to 94 defense now i guess it's also one two three combat so that's kind of cool there's the thermonuclear smoke devil task complete unfortunately nothing too crazy did get a few hard clues though and all in all this is just a really good money task so i still love it we got a quick one up next just some mutated zygomites so this will take like two minutes next task we have our trolls and i think i am going to skip this one even though it's a, like a decently fast cannon task it's more so for xp don't really make any money and like i said we're doing this for money and we're back to thermi i guess very early on into the next task we got ourselves an occult necklace now and we still have 116 kills left so very good chance of you know maybe the pet maybe the jar or honestly i'll just take a uh, smokes battle stat they're like one mil each right now Another smoke devil task completed. I can't even remember if I got the occult last task or this task, but it doesn't really matter. What does matter is that was our 129th task, which means it is time for yet another Konar task. Our last task was fire giants, and I think we had gargoyles before that. Bronze dragons. Okay, I am not doing that task. That does not sound fun at all. Konar, give me something better. Well, I mean, it's better, but yeah, that's not very interesting. Fire Giants were actually pretty good to me. Got three Brimstone Keys, two Ancient Shards, and it is time to get another task from Dorado. The first one of these tasks, 245 Blood Fells, is actually one of my favorite tasks. If you uh, follow my group Iron Man series, you'll know this is the task I actually got myself an Abude Heart off of. Maybe we can get a second one. Here is the first of these thick boys. Uh, I've missed you. First superior of the task. What are we going to get? Nothing too crazy, but the guaranteed totem piece is always nice. And it looks like our next assignment is going to be Vedia. Now, I'm pretty sure this boss is quite heavily camped, so I will just choose three here. And there is the three Vedia on KC completed. No rare drops, but didn't expect it with just three kills. Uh, and coups. I did extend these because you can barrage them in the catacombs. It's still a very fast task, so this won't take long. 
Enku task completed, got quite a few ancient shards, but it is time to head back to Duradel. And our next task is 20 black dragons. Man, I'm getting a lot of very quick tasks. Another fast task completed. Maybe we can actually get a task that we can stay a while. 219 vampires. This is actually kind of a task I was looking for. Not specifically vampires, since we've already gotten the blood shard from this episode. But I was looking for a nice task. I can, you know, just chill AFK a little bit. And this is definitely that. I just started the vampire task, but this is so noteworthy, I kind of just wanted to record this. I actually found an empty world at this Firewatch Sentinels. This is probably the first time since this place has come out that I've actually seen an empty world. Well, it seems like vampires are my task. A second blood shard? Was not expecting that. Definitely was not expecting a second blood shard, but we'll take it. We'll take it. It seems like the only good drops I get from these vampires, but like I said, that's great. And our next task is we're back to Bloodfelt, another great task. There's 95 defense now from the Bloodfelt task. It's like our fifth defense level, fourth. I've honestly lost track of that. So many gains that we've uh, gotten during the Slayer grind. Still another five and a half hours left, but probably won't get too many more levels. Now that I say that, I'm actually really close. Oh, I'm really, really close to a prayer level. I think I'm just going to miss it this task, yeah. But just with the Bone Crush and the Ash Sanctifier, it looks like we're going to get a prayer level from this 50 hours or, or 48 hours of Slayer. All right, Duradel Abyssal Demons. I actually like this task quite a bit. Another very decent melee task. And just a couple kills into the Abyssal Demon task. We should get ourselves a prayer level here since we were so close from doing Blood Velds. Very nice to get an entire prayer level pretty much from the Slayer grind in this episode. Unless I get a whip from this one right here, that is going to be zero whips from this task, which is really unfortunate because I have quite a few Abyssal Demons killed, like 4,000, and I think I have four whips in my name, so I'm like double the drop rate. Closing in on the end of the 48 hours, Duradel, we're going back to Thermi. This is a pretty long task as well, so this is going to get us very close to the end. Hey, the task is almost over, and we did get ourselves an Occult Necklace, but as you can probably see just by looking at the clock there, this task did take about as long as I expected, and and we might only have one task left. Back to Duradel for potentially our final task. 207 blood belts. I know we had blood belts not that long ago, but I feel like we had exactly 207. I better get started because I think I can get this task done and maybe start another task, but only, yeah, if I get started right now. Well, I knew this task would take most of the time, but it looks like we have 12 minutes left and it is our 140th task in a row, so maybe, just maybe, we can get something from Konar. You know what? 10 minutes, 11 minutes. Well, let's try to uh, get a couple Umbrado kills. Let's see what happens. I said if I was ever get another AVNT task, I would do Kriara. So here I am, 11 minutes left on the clock. I can't think of a better way to end the 48 hours. I don't think I'm going to get too many kills because I do believe there's a pretty long respawn time, not to mention I'm pretty inexperienced here and not also to mention the kill times are quite slow. So I'll give it a few kills, wait till the timer hits zero and yeah, let's see what happens. Because of respawn times, it's probably going to be the final Kriara kill, and unfortunately, it looks like we're just getting gold from Kriara. And that is pretty much it of the 48 hours. I can't do another kill within the next minute. So yeah, that is what it is. Now, I'm really, really excited to show you guys the loot that I've gotten all from the 48 hours of Slayer. Unfortunately, it wasn't as great as I was expecting, but I do think it is a lot more money than you might be expecting, considering the best drops we got were two Blood Furies, which, don't get me wrong, is uh, over 10 mil with just the two Blood Fury shards. But before we get into that, the first thing that I want to do is go over the Clue Scrolls. I have all the Clue Scrolls stacked here. I got a beginner for- I don't even remember where I got the beginner, but I got it during this video. Two Elite Caskets, I think one was Cerberus and one was uh, another boss that drops Elite, or honestly, I think Abyssal Demons also drop Elite, so maybe that's where I got the other one. And then 36 Hard Clues, that's the big ticket there. And Hard Clues, I believe, are average like 100k, plus you always have the uh, rare chance of hitting the Mega Rare table. Let's just get started.
do have eight brimstone keys to unlock from the 48 hours slayer looks like the first one 173k from dragon tips then we have three runite full helms 15 runite ore five renars i remember that used to be worth a lot but yeah i think renars have been going down recently Celestia's trees are still worth quite a bit more dragon arrow tips and then the last one's just iron ore all in all from the eight keys it looks like we made one mil so i think that's very good now that i've gone through the clue scrolls i want to go ahead and show the loot tracker from the 48 hours of slayer as you can see here 62.1 mil in total value though i didn't pick up everything i will say i think i picked up most items as i slowly scroll through here you can see what was the good and the bad items which items are worth the most you can see i made a decent amount of money from thermi i definitely think we made the most amount of money uh for time spent at the Firewatch Sentinels, so you can see that the two blood shards are one of the uh, best items that I got throughout this entire grind. Honestly, didn't get anything too too special. We did get ourselves that Berserker Ring from Dagonoth Rex, you can see there, which is quite nice. Spiritual Mages went pretty decent, but all in all, I'm happy with uh, how everything went, but a little underwhelming. Now that I've gone through the clues, opened the brimstone keys, and showed the loot tracker, let's go ahead and show the loot tab from the 48 hours of Slayer. 45 mil in the loot tab here. Starting off with the first task, I think we had Demonic Gorillas. I think we had DK shortly after that. 300 DK bones in total. I think we had two tasks there. I don't remember what gave us all these herbs. Uh, I want to say we had... Necreals next, that would make the most sense. Going down here, we, it looks like we had a Gargoyle task. Um, uh, makes the Dark Robe top and the Granite. Gold or Adamant, Plate Legs. I'm not even sure where I got this stuff. I know eventually Kraken seems to be right here. Then we had the Vampires where we got two Blood Shards, one from each task. And I want to say here is when we got around Thermi. Then we got the second uh, DK task. We got the Berserker Ring. Looks like that's what that was. We got that single Ambiency task. And then, all in all, we ended with Abyssal Demons and two AVNCs. And then we opened all the clue scrolls, and that's where the bottom loot came from. So that is quite a bit of loot. Though I should mention, even though it only says 45 mil here, there's a lot more loot that isn't shown here. As some of them went into rune tabs, and so on and so forth. And I want to go ahead and show the, the total bank value, which is now 157 mil. If you remember, we started this episode off with 100 mil, so that means we made 57 mil in the 48 hours of Slayer. So a little bit more than 1 mil an hour, like one point two mil i think is somewhat of an accurate statement so not terrible i have pretty much sold everything from the loot tab but i have not collected the big ticket items which are the blood shard the berserker ring i guess the onyx bolt tips and the two ofs of the two big clue items that we got so go ahead and collect that as well and it looks like we made just shy of 50 mil cash but we've made more than just that as I've shown with the bank value 107 mil, some of this cash came from that. I didn't even touch the runes when it came to selling everything. So all in all, we started with 100 mil and now we're up to 156 mil after selling everything. Which I think I should said the math earlier, it's like 1.2 mil an hour for the 48 hours of Slayer. After the 48 hours of Slayer in the last episode, our bank is now up to 157 mil. Now that is a lot of money, but we're going to need a lot more to purchase the Twisted Bow, which is currently at over 1.4 billion. So in this episode, I'm taking on a boss that I have never done before, the Phantom Muspa. Now the Phantom Muspa is very similar to Zora in the sense that it has very consistent GP in its normal drops, but also has a unique that isn't very uncommon at a rate of 1 in 100 for the Venator Shard. Five Venator Shards are needed to create the weapon from the Phantom Muspa, which is the Venator Bow. With the drop rate of 1 in 100 and the five shards needed, my goal for this episode is to kill the Phantom Muspa 500 times in hopes to create the Venator Bow. Now as with any boss in Old School RuneScape, we are going to need some gear to fight the Muspa, and luckily we do have 56 mil to spend, and there's one item in particular that I do want to buy for the Muspa. The one item I am looking for is the Armored or Crossbow. The reason I want this is the Phantom Muspa has a phase where prayer needs to be drained, and specifically, Sapphire Bolts are really good at draining prayer, and the Armored or Crossbow has a special attack, which makes it more likely that your Crossbow Bolts uh, special attack triggers. So let's go ahead and purchase the Armored or Crossbow, which is a lot more money than I last remember it. Maybe after I do Muspa, we should do some Ceridolmen because that is quite expensive. 43 mil for a Crossbow but hopefully it'll be well worth it.
Other than the orbital crossbow, I did purchase a few other items that I feel like I might need for the Phantom Muspa. Mainly just the Arams, I think is the thing I paid the most for. I think I also purchased the Light Bearer. So I did go through a decent amount of my cast stack. Definitely ordered a decent amount of Diamond Dragon Bolts, plus the Sapphire Dragon Bolts, which is the Prairie Drain effect I was talking about. One other thing I did purchase, which I thought was quite interesting, is the Forgotten Brew. If you're not sure what this is, it is basically like a super magic potion or just a normal magic potion. I think it's a plus 10 boost, but it does also drain some other stats. You can actually see right there uh, if you kind of uh, look really close, plus 10 magic, plus 4 prayer. Let's go ahead and give Muspa a try. And I, one thing I do want to know is with all of those purchases, I him down to a 400k cash stack so a lot of money is going to, into this. I made my way to the Phantom Muspa and if I'm going to be completely honest with you I am not at all confident but I will give it my best shot and we'll see if we're able to get a KC on our first try. Okay I have no idea what that was but yeah that was just 60 damage out of nowhere. Yeah, I'm new to the boss. I thought I was doing well, and then all of a sudden I just take a 60 out of nowhere. Let's go! I think I got my first kill. I think I died before because I didn't stand behind one of the spikes when he does that smash attack. But there we go, our first kill. And that's decent drop, 466 soul ruins. That's okay. I do think I want to bank just in case. And one thing I also need to do is like mark a safe spot, I believe. But overall, there's our first kill. Before we go any further, I do briefly want to go over the boss's mechanics. This isn't an in-depth guide or anything, but just explaining what's going on. The boss has two phases, a darker melee phase, and a green magic slash range phase. He is weak to magic during the melee phase, and he is weak to range during the green phase. During the fight, he will also perform two special attacks. One of the special attacks, he teleports around the room like crazy, and one of the other special attacks, he will send heat-seeking spikes after you. When the boss is nearing death, he will slam the ground, which actually caused my first death. In order to take zero damage from that attack, you need to hide behind one of the spikes. After that, he enters a prayer phase, where the sapphires come in handy, draining his 75 HP shield, which is entirely made of prayer. Once the shield is drained, it is now a DPS check. Kill the boss as fast as possible, as spikes will now spawn permanently around the room and can cover every tile very quick, and that's pretty much everything about the boss. This should be a decently fast kill, at least it felt pretty fast. And we got ourselves a frozen cache and 666 cannonballs. It wasn't actually a personal best, but frozen cache, I believe that's pretty decent. Uh, I think you can even get like a Venator shard from this, I'm gonna go ahead and open it. Dragon plate skirt, eh, not too bad. I cannot believe how lucky I am. That I only- uh, it's so weird, uh, I only see a single Venator Shard when you get one, but wow. Six kills in. We get a Venator Shard. We're up to 15kc now, I'm definitely getting a lot better, but we've gotten ourselves our second Frozen Cache. Honestly, I'm not even sure if I should be keeping these or opening them as we go. I think I'm going to keep this one now, but maybe in the future I'll open this before we hit our 500. There is no way venator shard number two and the same thing happened the last time you could probably tell because this probably happens to everyone that i'm not really used to it i haven't actually seen a uh venator shard drop and it just so happens seems like when you get a venator shard drop you don't get anything else that is awesome 23 kc and we've already got two out of five of our venator shards that we need for the bow this is crazy super happy and i honestly love the phantom muspa there's a combat achievement. I think that is for 25 kill count. Not too bad. Actually, four points, so that's kind of nice. And we actually are getting pretty close to completing the elite combat achievements. I know that doesn't have much to do with Muspa, but that's kind of cool. And Muspa does actually have quite a few combat achievements. I don't know how rare this item is, but I'm just going to take a guess that anytime I get a spirit seed, it is a rare drop. I know a magic seed's like one in 494, or I guess two times whatever to get 494, because that's what Alon did for his video. So I assume a spirit seed, even rarer than that. There's an item I've been looking for, the Ancient Icon. I believe you use this on the Ancient Staff and you get like a new Ancient Staff that's like slightly better. I do think you have to take it to that Desert Treasure 2 guy. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I've got the Ancient Staff and the Ancient Icon. I believe I talked to Elvis about my cash stack in case it's needed. Uh, I found this weird icon. Do you know what it is? Show it to this guy here and let's see. Combine. Yes, please. 
And there we are, we now have an Ancient Scepter, which I believe just gives plus 5% damage instead of no damage increase, and then it also gives a special effect depending on what spell you're using. I know for Ice Barrage, instead of 32 ticks of freezing, you get 35 ticks of freezing, so that's actually pretty nice. And there is 50 kill count now at the Phantom Most, but I'm wondering if that's like all the KC requirements. I know like a lot of the bosses got their KC requirements reduced significantly, but I think Muspa came out after a lot of the combat achievements did that. So I don't think they would make like an insanely high kill count, but Musk was pretty fast, up to 50 kill count my first day here. Decided to invest in some Ruby Dragon Bolt E. Now hopefully with these we should be able to get that 3 minute kill. This is our first attempt with the Ruby Bolts and that was an extremely fast kill and we got it. First try, we got ourselves the Charged Ice. It says it's worth 500k. I'm sure I'm not the first person to think this, but I was thinking maybe I can alk it, but it does say high out price is 6k, but there we are. First kill with the Ruby Bolts and we already got a 247 and there is definitely a few things I could have done to speed up that kill. I think it's worth mentioning with that charged ice drop we are now 5 out of 6 in the collection log so we have a very real chance of completing the must for the collection log going into this. Hey there is our first clue scroll of the grind. I've heard and I haven't actually fact checked this or not that this boss drops hard and elite clue scrolls. Not only that but they drop them decently common so... 53 kills in I think or 54 kills in we've gotten our first clue scroll and we're definitely gonna do all the clue scrolls that we get. We got ourselves another new personal best here at Phantom Must but if you look at my inventory I've been here quite a while and this is actually my ninth kill. If I get this next one that's gonna be 10 kills in a row which is actually a combat achievement. The combat achievement completed not too bad considering the gear I'm using. I didn't actually think earlier that this combat achievement was possible with this gear but proved myself wrong very happy about that. And with 10 kills, you also get a lot of loot. As you can see, my entire inventory is filled up with loot here. Okay, if the one spirit seed drop I got earlier isn't rare, maybe three spirit seed has to be extremely rare. And one thing I didn't know is apparently spirit seeds have like a hidden untradeable value because in my CC, it shouted out 420 GP. Ah, uh, that's what I want to see. Venator Shard number three on 85 KC. I think I rhymed like three times there, but I will take that. That is beautiful. That means we have three out of the five shards we needed in order to make the bow on only 85 kill count. And I want to do 500 of this boss. So very, very high chance now that we actually complete the Veneto bow. So I make my way to the GE where all strange things happening. In the last episode, I couldn't use the bank. And in this episode, we have a flashing arrow on a Vorkath pet, which was over that guy's head a few minutes ago. Strange things happening at the Grand Exchange. Okay, this is probably one of the fastest kills I have ever had. A 229... That is pretty crazy. That is like 40 seconds, or rather 20 seconds off of my personal best before. I started the kill, I kid you not, with three ruby bolts. It could have been slightly faster. I did have to eat a couple times that kill, but a 225, 229, I don't know if I'm ever going to beat that. I don't know how I did it, but somehow I was able to beat that crazy personal best I had, which was a 229, and I beat it by like was that 13 seconds? That's insane. I'm just a bit bored at Musk, but I thought it'd be a really cool idea to at least throw some combat achievements when I am getting a slight bit bored. And I saw one that is a decent bit interesting. This can't escape one, kill the Muspa without running. I feel like that is very easy to do. And probably the only reason I haven't done it yet is because I keep my run on automatically. So yeah, let's get that one out of the way. That should be the kill. I do not think I ran the entire time. Yes, we got ourselves the combat achievement and we also got ourselves a hard clue. So yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Very nice. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. 135 KC and we've already gotten our fourth Venator Shard. Man, we're one shard away and we have, uh, what is it? 365 uh, kill count to go. I think we have a very, very good chance of completing the boat now. Up to a pretty special point in my opinion on the kills and you guys are going to get a sneak peek at the loot tab so far. But with the special moment I'm talking about is the Ancient S's. With the 4,000 I just got from the last kill, we are now up to a white stack 100,000 Ancient S's so far. After this kill, we have hit the halfway point on Muspa, even got a frozen cash that kill. 250 kills and I promise you I'm not complaining when I say this but it has now been over 100 kills since I've seen my last Venator Shard and we are still only one away from creating the bow so maybe we'll get one soon but again I'm not complaining we've already gotten very lucky. 
Well, it actually happened a lot sooner than I thought it would. Another personal best here at the Phantom Muspa 210. And yeah, at this point, pretty much all my personal best. It just ruby spec into ruby spec into ruby spec. And that's just kind of how it goes at this point. We are now up to 459 kill count. And unfortunately, we have not seen a Venator shard since over 300 kill count ago. It was like 150 around that KC since we saw the last Venator shard. And yeah, it was really nice at the start to get Spoon the Venator Shards, but approaching 500 kill count here, which means we are actually, even with the insane luck we had at the start, about to possibly go under rate on Venator Shards. I didn't think that was even possible with the uh, how Spooned we got at the beginning, but we have 41 kill count to get that last Venator Shard. Can we get 5 Venator Shards to make the Venator Bow within 500 kill count? There is no way this has to be scripted 499 kill count one kill before we finish the grind we got ourselves the last venator we shard we needed we were like 300 some kills without a venator shard and the almost final kill the second to last kill we did it we completed the venator shard grind for the venator bow one kill before 500 kills. Of course, before we finish our final kill count, we have to combine all the Venator Shards together to create the Venator Bow. Absolutely, let's do it. There we are, the Venator Bow. I feel like it's only fitting to finish the final Muspa kill, the 500th kill with the Venator Bow. And there it is, 500 Muspa kills. And just at the end, we were able to get that final Venator start. I still can't believe it. It was one kill ago, 499 kill count, and we got the final Venator shard we needed. Now that we are finished with our 500 Muspa kills, it is time to go over the loot. I do have a few things I need to open, like the frozen cash, the clue scrolls that I got, and I think I also got some spirit seeds, which can be turned into high level contracts. But before I do that, one thing I just want to briefly go over is those 500 kills kind of killed my supplies. These were drops here. The sharks, you can see I sold all my potions. We go into the other tab, sold all my runes except for the ones I was using. I ended with two rupee dragon bolts. And if you're curious about the cash stack, kind of a uh, spoiler about how much money I made, but 112 GP is what I was left with. Of course, let's just go ahead and show you guys the loot tracker now that you kind of have an idea. 109 mil from the 500 Phantom Musk, but for some reason, four kills aren't showing up here, but I can't imagine there was too interesting from those four kills because it looks like I already have the five Venator shards and all the other expensive drops. Drops. but we can go ahead and enter the bank and show you guys the loot tab so out of the 109 mil it looks like i have 97 of it as profit so probably about 12 mil in supplies actually that is not true because some items went into different tabs such as things like i think i got death runes as a drop i definitely got soul runes as a drop quite a few cannonballs and what was it the mana rays as well I think I'm going to go ahead and start with the frozen cash and then go into the clue scrolls and then finally do the spirit seeds. So let's go ahead and do that. I don't know if there's like multiples you can get of a single item or maybe I can just have all 20 in the inventory spots, but let's do 10 at the start. Let's see, we got chaos ruins, coal, 21 limpers. So I, I guess it just rolls on its table. That's a better drop. It's like 100k there. 905 essence, four torstal seeds, another four torstal seeds. Yeah, nothing too interesting. Oh, the grimy toad flax is a decent drop. And then I guess we have 10 more cash to open. Maybe, just maybe we can get that Venator Shard, 960. Maybe five Snapdragon Seeds, I think this is de pretty decent. Spirit Seed, so we can turn that in. Good thing we did that uh, first. There we go. We got the Frozen Cash from the Frozen Cash. That is a 1 in 125 drop rate. That's pretty interesting. So we get to open another one. Room Plate Legs, another Spirit Seed, four Torstal Seeds. Five more snapdragons and the final one for Tolstoy Seed. So unfortunately, we didn't hit the one in 500 on the Venator Shard, but let's be honest, I couldn't expect to hit that. So next up, now that we've already opened our frozen cash, is going to be the clue scrolls. I'm probably going to go through these quick, but of course, if I get a master, I will definitely do my master clue scrolls. 28k. And there it is, three clue scrolls in. We got ourselves a master clue, but look how terrible these hard clues are. 28, 43, and 13k. Hopefully this master can be a little bit better. Well, that ended up being one of the longest master clues I've ever done, but back to the hard clues. On to the elite clues. And we've got ourselves another master. Another master down, so now we have two more elite clues. We're gonna get from these. Nothing too special, but decent loot, 250k each. And then we have the master clues. What are we gonna get from these? 
And we have a Mimic on our first one. That's beautiful. All right, the first Mimic, or I guess the first Master completed, and 600 Death Burns is my Mimic reward. And our final Master Clue is going to be a nice 645k. That's pretty decent. Our first Master was 713k, and our second one 645k, so about 1.3 mil on two Masters. That is very, very good. And the final thing I need to do is turn in the Spirit Seeds to Guildmaster Jane here, and that is going to give me 15... I think level five or the highest tier seed packs possible. I'm just gonna open these and I'll show you guys the loot. Now, unfortunately, a loot tracker doesn't seem to be tracking the seed packs, which I thought it did. But if you're curious, you can kind of just look at which seed stacks went up. I think I showed these earlier. I definitely got a few dragon fruit tree seeds. So those are quite nice, didn't get any Celestris. And then the other seeds all came down here. I don't think there's any notable ones because all the like really expensive seeds came from Muspa. So they're also in the seed stacks here. Now it's time for what I'm looking forward to the most. And that is is selling all of this loot and I'll make sure I get all of the loot. What I mean by that is I'll definitely go into the other tabs where I have loot available such as the cannonball, the rune stacks, and I think the mana rays. I'll definitely make sure I get it all and we'll see exactly how much profit I've gotten from Phantom Muspa. I've sold off all of the minor items and in total it gets me 49.6 mil pretty much on the dot. Of course we still have the two big items, all of the ancient essence that we were able to get from all the muspa and the venter to bow which I was able to sell for pretty much 38.5 mil. So very nice there with the tax I guess it's just a nice 38 pretty much flat. And then the ancient essence which totals to pretty much 24 mil so we can go ahead and collect that. And in total from muspa we have profited it looks like 111.6 mil now if we throw this into the bank we're at 257 mil and we started with 156 mil so we profited about 101 mil the thing i do want to mention is that the arbiter crossbow actually went up a ton since i bought it i think i bought it at the beginning of this episode for around 42 mil and now it's hovering around 49 mil so i'm going to try to sell it for over there i only had the offer in for eight seconds but we were able to sell the arbiter crossbow for a very very good profit so just by owning the crossbow for about a week i was able to make six mil so that is very beautiful we made a lot of money at muspa barely finishing off the venator bow and left with a hundred and 60 mil cash stack and in this episode we're gonna need that cash stack as we're gonna sort of make an investment if you can call it that i'll show you what we're doing i have obtained a lot of items in old school runescape but one item that has always eluded me are ranger boots i've done well over the drop rate of 1 in 288 in medium clues but never have i seen a pair until hopefully today as i plan to do over 1000 medium clues in hopes to get quite a few pairs of ranger boots to make a bit of money but as long as i receive one i can finally say that is another drop that i have achieved that is going to be my goal for this episode to obtain a pair of ranger boots but i have a pretty good chance as you've probably already read the title and you'll know exactly what i mean by that is i plan to do 1000 medium clues and in order to do so i'm going to have to buy some eclectic implings if i can remember how to spell here there we are eclectic impling if you don't know eclectic implings have a 1 in 25 chance to give a medium clue and if i'm going to do a thousand i'm going to have to buy 25,000 eclectic implings which, that is a lot of money, 113 mil it looks like I'll have to spend on the Eclectic Implings. Fortunately for me, uh, we do have 160 mil cash stack because we made a lot of that in the last episode. So I can definitely afford it, but before I make this buy offer, there are a couple things I want to do first. First thing I want to do is probably fill up all my stash units and to figure out which stash units I need. I have the stash chart in my house. I figured since I am going to be doing a thousand clues, I'll most likely go through every single clue step possible and it looks like I only have two out of the however many this is stash units filled up so I'll just jot these down and then go ahead and buy everything fill it up and after a little bit of grinding all of our medium stash units are now full now that the stash units are the way there is still one more or I guess multiple things that I need to do and that is just basically get my inventory set for the clue scroll grind a thousand medium clues basically means I'm going to go through every clue step and having the fastest way to get to every clue step whether it be teleportation or charter or whatever method of transportation I need I should probably have it so I'm going to go ahead and see what I need and I think I am now ready to do 1000 medium clue scrolls I'm probably missing a few teleportation items or some items that would be useful and if that's the case I'll just grab them while I'm doing the clues and just continue to have them in my inventory space. I've got a decent buy offer in for Eclectic Implings, already bought 3,000 of them and 111 mil down, so we better get a few pair of Ranger Boots. 
Time to get started on this grind that is going to take me an extremely long time. Best case scenario, this grind only takes 50 hours. There is 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, not exactly 700, but close enough. 800, 900, 1000 medium caskets. And one more extra casket for good measure. Before we do anything, let's go ahead and see much how much it costs to get these 1001 caskets. So first and foremost, let's go to the price of the electric implings. It looks like I paid just over 111 mil for the 25k electric implings. However, I did not use them all. I still have 701 extra here. And opening the ones I did have, it looks like I got about 36 mil back, mainly just from getting the jars back as you do get a good portion of them back. So I do want to go ahead and sell everything off here and see how much we actually paid. After a little bit of price finagling, we've gotten everything sold, and if we go ahead and collect, it looks like we have 37.3 mil. 111 mil minus the 37.3 mil that we got back means that I have 73.8 mil I need to make back from these 1,000 medium caskets. Before I open these medium caskets, I just want to remind everyone that at max efficiency, you can complete about 20 clues per hour. So 1000 caskets at minimum took me 50 hours and I can promise you, I was definitely not doing this at max efficiency. So it would really mean a lot to me if you could subscribe. It's free, it takes two seconds, and it is genuinely the best way to support my content. I am trying to hit 20,000 subs before the end of the year, so you could genuinely help me reach that. With that out of the way, let's get into the loop. This is the first medium casket and I have only done 10 medium clue scrolls so there are going to be a lot of uniques. I basically have nothing in the collection log so everything that I get that is a medium clue scroll unique is going to be a unique for me in the collection log. I should also get quite a few purple sweets, as you can see here, 17 sweets from a single clue. And these will add up a lot. Purple sweets are worth about 10k each at the moment, maybe a little bit less than that as you can see here. So I will make a decent amount of money from purple sweets. And there is our first master of the grind. I will be doing every master clue that I get, and I should get quite a few of them. I believe it's a 1 in 30 chance to get a master clue from medium clue scrolls. And with the 1,000 clues, I should get 33, 34 masters. So yeah, let's get started on our first one. There is the final item I actually needed for the shared collection log for Clue Scrolls, the Unholy Blessing. It's not worth as much as it used to be, but there is the complete log completed for shared Clue Scrolls. And there is another pair of boots combined with a Master Clue Scroll, the Spiked Manacles. A decent drop, about 1 mil in value.
There it is, the pair of ranger boots we were looking for. I got it on exactly 400 caskets. I got the clueless scroll and the ranger boots in the same clue. That is actually very, very cool. Glad we got one pair of ranger boots, 610 medium caskets. Hopefully we can get a lot more. And the clueless scroll is also kind of cool. Halfway through the medium clues, unfortunately only one pair of rangers at the moment, but we still have 500 to go. There it is, the second pair of Ranger boots. I was getting a little worried. Again, I'm decently dry or a very a little bit underrate to say the least. But there we are, our second pair of Ranger boots, and we have 283 caskets to go. The drop rate of Ranger boots is about a 1 in 288, so I'm really, really hoping we can get that third pair of Ranger boots. Otherwise, we're probably not going to make too much money.
up to a thousand medium clues completed. 10 more to go. What are we going to get from the last 10? It looks like unless we get really lucky in our last 10, we are only going to have two ranger boots and a thousand medium clues which would be very unfortunate since the drop rate is about one in 288 from about a thousand you should expect three to four of them so i really do hope in our last two maybe last medium clue that is definitely very unfortunate let's just go ahead and open up the collection log go to medium clues as you can see here here is basically everything we were able to complete 112 out of 115 out of our first a thousand i'm pretty happy about that it looks like one piece I'm missing is an elegant piece, which are double the rate of pretty much anything else you can get. And it looks like I'm just missing a random miter and a random adamant plate body. So if you look at the boots, as you can see, we got pretty unlucky on the rangers and the holy sandals, which are the more valuable ones. And then spike manacles, climbing boot G's, and wizard boots. We did get 25 master clues, which is also under rate. We did get actually 26, but I did lose one of them during a worldly step. So I have 25 caskets. And there's still quite a bit of loot we can get from these guys. We are at ourselves our first Mimics. Mimics have an extremely high chance of hitting the third rage table. So let's go ahead and do our Mimic. From the Mimic, we get ourselves looks like an extra 600 death runes, but a 700k casket, not too bad. Uh, that's a pretty decent item, about three or four masters in, or I guess five masters in. We get ourselves a tormented ornament kit. Looks like that's worth about three mil. That's definitely a little bit of money, but hopefully we can get something maybe worth a little bit more. Maybe I'm being a bit too greedy, but that is still very nice. Oh, ho, ho, that, that is special. Gilded Coif. We hit the Mega Red table. That is not a very valuable item, but it is very, very cool to actually hit the Mega Rare table. Wow, Gilded Coif. That is definitely a Mega Rare. That's super cool. Go ahead and wear that thing. It actually looks pretty cool too. It's probably just gonna be chucked into the GE because I can use the money, but that does look very cool. And that's kind of cool to hit the Mega Rare table. I've only ever hit the Mega Rare table once which was a Gilded Chain Body, so to hit it again is very, very awesome. Gilded Coif, that is uh, very, very rare. Uh, I don't know the drop rate, but I'll probably put it on screen. And our next casket is actually a Mimic, so a lot of luck coming right here. Let's go ahead and complete this Mimic. And this time we got, it looks like 25 Grammy Renar added to our casket. And back to back Mimics, that is actually uh, pretty funny. I'll take it. Yet another Mimic defeated, and this time it looks like it adds 500 Blood Runes. And our fourth Mimic from 25 Masters. We will take it. Another Mimic down, and this time it looks like it adds 25 Wines of Zamrock. I really would like it if it, you know, added a little bit of Third Age to it instead. The last master casket. Unfortunately, nothing too special. That being said, we did get the gilded uh, coif, and I guess that is quite special, but unfortunately, it's not worth a whole lot. This whole thing was about to make money, so let's see how much money we made. If we pull up the loot tracker from the 25 master clues that I ended up completing, we made 12.3 mil, and that's actually a quite a decent amount of money for masters. I can't be too upset about that, plus hitting gilded, meaning I hit the mega rare tables. Kind of exciting. And then we go down to the mediums where I'm a little disappointed. It looks like a lot of money, you know, 995 mediums. Sometimes that's spam click open too. So sometimes the uh, loot isn't 100% accurate, but we did open a thousand and one and only getting two Ranger boots is very unfortunate. And 150 mil, again, might seem like a lot of money, but it should have been way more than that. If we get four pairs of Ranger boots, we're looking at close to like 180, 190 mil. So... Three to four range of boots is what I should have expected. Getting two is definitely slightly unlucky. But with that being said, we definitely profited as if we go on our bank here, 310 mil. And we started this episode with 256 mil. So that is a profit, what, 54 mil? Something about there. However, we do have to sell everything. And I am expecting clue items to not sell as well as they could. So I have a feeling we're definitely going to lose a few mil selling all of this out. 
I've pretty much sold everything off that I've gotten from the medium clue scrolls and the master clue scrolls as well. And it looks like we have ourselves a nice 24.6.7, something like that. And here is all the big items that ended up selling. Ranger boots sold for looks like 37.5 mil. Go ahead and collect that. Got the holy sandals as well. The purple sweets ended up being a lot of money. I have a part of them here and then the other part here. Nice 13 mil in purple sweets. The Gilded Coif, not worth a whole bunch. Tormented Ornament Kit, not too bad. And then the Spike Manacles, it's not terrible. 121 mil total is what I ended up getting from all of the Master Clues and all of the Medium Clues. The 1000 Medium Clue Scrolls costed us about 73.8 mil. So you subtract that from the 121.6 mil, we'll call that. And it looks like we profited just about 48 mil, 47.8 mil total. And if I throw everything here in the bank, that should be about right. 307 mil and we started with 256 mil. So it looks like we somehow profited 51 mil. Maybe there were some items I missed or maybe there were some items that actually went off while I had them. Either way, we definitely profited over 50 mil, which is nice considering that we got decently unlucky in the range of boots. We definitely had a potential to get three or four of them, but we did only get two of them. With the release of Desert Treasure 2 came four new bosses, and in this episode, I'm camping one of them until I receive the Vestige, an item that can be combined with one of the four Dagonoth King rings to create an upgraded version. I asked my community which I should do first, and Leviathan was a clear favorite, with Vardorvis being second. I decided, however, I should probably do Vardorvis first. The kill times are faster, I enjoy the boss the most, and if I were to do Leviathan, I would have to invest over half of my bank into a Bowfront Crystal, and that's not something I'm looking to do right now, so I decided let's make some money at Vardorvis first. For Vardorvis, I'm going to want the best melee gear I can afford, so I sold off some things that I'm not currently using, and invested 75 mil into the best melee gear I could afford. Still, there is a couple things that I need to grab first, and that is the Ring of Shadows. If you guys know, and if you've died with this thing before, you don't actually keep it on death and there is one thing you can do to get an extra one currently you can't like just go and buy one but there is kind of a cheese method first things first with the ring of shadows equips i'm going to head to Taverly and i'm just going to get 28 of these door keys now with these 28 door keys what i'm going to do next is get myself to extremely low hp and then just die i think my preferable method is just to die to desert heat once you die, you'll notice my Ring of Shadows is on the ground along with my Construction Cape. So what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and pick up the Construction Cape so I can teleport. Inside the vault from the quest, we are able to buy a new Ring of Shadows from the mysterious stranger here. And if we head back to Lumbridge, our old one should still be there. And now we have two Rings of Shadows. And now with all of that prep work out of the way, it is time to farm the boss. I am really confident in my setup. A nice, what is that, 158 strength bonus. That is actually really nice and the Ring of Suffering for that effect. I don't want to go over the mechanics too much. If you're looking for a guide, there are plenty of good ones out there, like from Telecon. But general information, the boss is weak to Slash and has high defense, so Fang works really well on Slash. The mechanics also speed up towards the end of the fight, so I use the Claws towards the end to finish it off as fast as possible. I'm not using it in this clip, but I later find out Thralls are very useful here, along with my Ring of Suffering, for the recoil effect, and would highly recommend, if you're looking to camp this boss, to use Ring of Suffering with recoils on, and Thralls. Hey, that's a good start. Already 53 kill count, and we've got an Awakener's Orb. I'm going to go on and insta-sell this, because right now the Awakening bosses are coming out, and I have a feeling they're going to be worth the pretty much the peak right now. Ended up selling the orb for about 3.8 mil, not too bad. We now have an easy clue scroll of all things. Drops are getting even more interesting. Hey, I will take it. Another Awakener's Orb on 92 kill count. It seems like these are decently common. They're worth quite a bit right now. So let me try to check this in the Grand Exchange as well. Looks like this Awakener's Orb actually sold for less than the last one. 3.4 mil instead of the 3.8 I got last time. We'll take it though. I'm not going to spoil the video, but I received quite a few Awakening Orbs throughout this grind, which was super nice. They seem to all sell for around 3 mil to 3.5 mil, which is an insane amount of money for an item that I received a super nice bonus to a boss with really valuable uniques and not as bad of a normal drop table as some people are making it out to be. Vardorvis also drops every tier of clue from easy to elite at a pretty decent rate. And of course, I am going to do every single clue that I get. Oh no, that is not what I wanted to see. A chromium ingot. I do believe this means I rolled the table where the ring is and a bunch of other items. And this is the least value out of all of them. 
That is pretty unfortunate, the first drop I've seen here at 341kc at Vardorvis. I think I should probably insta-sell this thing because I can't imagine it going up. Sold the it for about 1.1 mil, a little better than I was expecting, but again, that could have been Virtus, it could have been the Axe Head, so it would have been 2 on 4 of the Axes, or it could have been another ring roll, and maybe I'm already 2 out of 3 and that could have just been the ring. Unfortunate. Oh no, another one! I don't know how many kill count it was in between, but I know my second or first Chromian Ingrid wasn't that long ago. And now we've got my second that could have been two ring rolls and I could have just had the ring. Oh no. I think instead of insta-selling this ingot, I should probably keep it because if I do plan on getting the ring, I'm going to need three ingots anyway to make it. So we'll call this one out of three, but I technically already got two. Bro, what is this? Another Chromium Ingot in 393k oh my god in the last like within three this 300 kill count the 400 kill count range i've gotten three chromium ingots in such a small time period that could have been three ring rolls that could have been the ring and the kill after i get the chromium ingot i get a blood quartz at 394 kill count so i'm gonna get my first blood quartz of all things that's not exactly what i'm looking for a second blood quartz 504 kill count i am kind of curious how rare these quartz are the fact i've only gotten two and 500 kill count makes me think it is quite rare we actually got a third blood quartz that is quite interesting to say the least okay there we go that's a unique We'll take that, I think. It's the worst piece, but it is a unique. It's taken this long to get one, but hey, a uh, Virtus Mask at, what is that, 629 KC. Definitely would have preferred the ring, and I'm still going to keep going for the ring. I should probably go ahead and sell this now, because I can't imagine this is going to go up at any time soon. Sold the Virtus Mask for 18.6, and then I awakened his orb I got earlier. I decided just to chuck in for 2.5 mil. Not too, too bad, but again, 18 mil for all of the grinding I've been doing so far. I'm not too, too happy about that. Would have loved it for the top or bottom would have been loved a lot more, but it is nice to see something. Blood Quartz, I think number four at 791 kill count. I thought these would be a lot more common than they are. It looks like they're about a one in 200 based on my drop rate at least. And just a bit later, it looks like we're on our fifth Blood Quartz now. Oh no, that is not what I want to see. Like 300 kills after I got myself the Virtus Mask. We've hit the table again, and it's a chromium ingot. Oh no. I don't even know what to say at this point. Chromium ingot number 5, 966 kill count. Yeah, I just don't even know what to say. Okay, hello. There is another drop. Virtus Bottoms from... Dorvis at 1047 kill count. I was not expecting that. Two Virtus pieces and I haven't even gotten a ring yet. I, I don't even know if I should be, or be happy about this or not. It's worth a decent amount of money. It's definitely worth more than the mask is. I'll sell, let's see what I can sell it for. Oh, by the way, I've been stocking up on my GE offers on these Awaken orbs. They've been slowly going up as you can see as I've been getting them. I've just been selling them off as I got them and I also still have my Virtus mask in here. So let's just collect all that and that's going to be a nice, what is that? 39.5 mil and then I have to sell the bottoms. Virtus bottoms sold for 33 mil but I'm going to leave the cash in just like I did last time with the mask and probably just stack up orbs again. I think this is blood quartz number six or something like that so I think it's a pretty much guarantee at this point it's a one in 200 drop rate but I it is only my kill counts to go off of. Yes! Yes! It exists! It exists! I didn't think it would exist! Oh my god! I am out of here! It exists! It exists! Almost 1300 kill count. Oh my god, I am so happy. I am so, so happy. Okay, I used a uh, chisel on the Berserker ring. And uh, funny enough, one thing I just wanted to go over real quick the Ultra for Siege, as you already see, I got as a drop. The three Chromium Ring you saw I got as a drop. But during my Slayer episode, I actually got a Berserker ring as a drop. So I actually pretty much fully completed the ring uh, if I was an Iron Man, for example, all for myself. So that's pretty cool. Okay, if you guys get a Vestige yourself, what you have to do is use it on the icon and it'll like say, you're not sure how to do this, maybe your friend can help. And uh, can you help me with combining some items, blah, 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 here, uh, blah, yeah, dialogue, spacebar. Alright, now I should be able to combine, I oh, and I need 500 blood runes, of course I do. If you guys are watching the video real closely, you may have noticed I actually just had blood runes in my rune pouch, so uh, I did not need to run all the way around the world, get my blood runes, try different locations for a furnace, I'm not even going to go over all of it. Let's just combine 
Uh, yes, I would like to create the altar this or the icon, and then in the furnace, craft an altar ring. This process cannot be reversed. Yes, there we are, the altar ring with my bonus. Currently, I am at 158 strength bonus. With it on, I am at 170 strength bonus. Let's just head to the house and see what I can hit, just for fun. I have nowhere near max strength bonus, but I am 99 strength. Uh, I have the Fang currently. Let's turn Pidey on, drink a sip of the combat potion, and looks like I can hit a 49 with just a normal hit. If we spec, we can hit a 57. Dragon Claws, let's put those back in slash. If we just slash, we can hit a 44. And with the Dragon Claws special attack, 43, 21, 10, 11. That's awesome. That's that's really cool. Now it comes to selling the Ultor ring. I'm actually thinking about holding on to it just for a bit. Uh, it looks like right now I still have to collect uh, the Virtus Bottoms that I got at like a thousand something kill count and then all the Awakener Orbs I've gotten since then. I may as well just collect that now. It looks like they have been slowly going up and it seems like they're still going up. So maybe I should get back onto the next grind so I can get more Awakener Orbs and make money off there. So if we collect all that, another 53 mil. One thing Vardorfus also drops is Clue Scrolls. As you can see here, I got a very mixed variety of Clue Scrolls. It seems to be the same drop rate in all of them. And if I got this much in 1300 kill counts, what does that give me? One every 50 kills? Something along there. Anyway, let's go ahead and start the easies and start opening them up. And if we get ourselves anything decent, um, we can uh, show that. But I guess uh, easy Clue Scrolls. Can't expect too much, but we do get a Master Clue. Master Clue completed onto the rest of the easies, which is just one from nothing. We have five more mediums, so maybe we can redeem ourselves from the... I'm gonna say Ranger Boots, but I need another Master, I'll take it. Okay, I'm in the middle of doing this Master Clue, and as you can see here, I got the Quiz Master random, and I got a Clue Scroll from that one as well, so I guess I'm doing yet another Clue for you guys. Back to our Clue Scrolls now, now that we have an extra hard... Let's see if we get anything from the mediums, and it looks like unfortunately we do not recover our ranger luck. However, hard clues tend to have really good drops, as you can see our first one's already 100k. Uh, second one, and we got a unique already. 12 more clues to go, let's see what we can get from these, and another master. So our easy clue, medium clue, and now hard clues have all given me a master. And now I have 5 elites, which means I have enough for the drop rate of a master from this one as well. 4 more hard clues to go, let's see, here we got another unique. What is that, most Laharmis teleport? The Guthix Crozier and the last hard clue. Nothing too crazy from all of those. And then we have our elite clues, which starting with 315k. And then we have a black dehyde body gilded. I think that's kind of cool. Not really worth a whole bunch. Next one, 218k. 155k. And as tradition, our fourth master from our fourth different tier of clues. Finally, we have four master caskets. First one, 140k. Second one, Mummy Legs. I'm pretty sure that is a really rare item, like tied with Anku type of rare. So that is really cool to get in the collection log. Uh, next we have a Greater Demon Mask. That's another collection log, so it's really cool to get those in there. And our final one, 271k. I'm okay with that. So in total, if we look at the loot tracker, 171 mil here from Vardorvis from all of the normal loot, plus getting the Vestige means I got an extra 210 mil from the ring, so that gets me 380 mil from Vardorvis. Then we have the clues, which I think add an extra like 2 mil. Yeah, well, it looks like closer to 3 mil with the master clue. So in total, that's like 385 mil I made from this grind. That's pretty decent. And now it is time to sell off all of the normal loot that I have here. 37.4 mil. I already sold off the Virtus and Orbs, which I showed throughout the video. And I do think I want to keep the Ultra Ring for now. I have a feeling that it might go up either when the drop rate's released, or there's actually potential that they might make the boss harder. I know it might seem crazy because the boss is already the hardest boss by far, but I've heard some rumors about that. So I think for now, I want to hold on to it. I've sold everything off in the loot tab, and now my final cash deck is up to 143 mil. I think I had 96 mil before I started selling off anything, so in total it looks like I made what is that 47 mil from selling off everything including the clues, and in total I started with basically no cash but I had a little bit of supplies, and in total it looks like I made somewhere around 175 mil if you do not include the ring. So I probably used 35 mil plus in supplies, which is not that surprising considering how many times I died at Vardorvis and considering how expensive it was to camp the boss as long as I did.
my bank is now up to 456 mil plus the ultra ring it is worth around 210 mil as of recording so if you add that on to the total it looks like my bank value for this episode is now 666 i don't know if i just cursed myself but 666 million is my total bank value that is insane i over doubled my bank value in this video but not that surprising seeing as this new content and i did get the most valuable drop and in this episode we're continuing our hunt for the new best in slot rings at the community poll winner the leviathan the leviathan drops the venator vestige an item used to create the new archer's ring at a drop rate of 1 in 768. Just like Vardorvis, I'm hoping to receive the Vestige under drop rate as the ring is currently worth 150 mil and dropping quick. Before we start, I have some gear to sell off from the last episode to hopefully afford the best gear possible for this grind. Sold off all of the melee gear that I was using for Vardorvis. I profited a huge amount in the Fang as I bought it for about 33 mil. Everything else is about the same. We collect all that and it's a huge cash stack, 209 mil, which we can add that to our already existing big cash stack for now over a 457 mil bank if you do not include the ring. Speaking of, a lot of people wanted me to sell off the Ultra Ring in the last episode. So let's go ahead and do that as it's currently worth around 220 mil. The Ultra Ring ended up selling for 220 mil, so I am glad I held on to it for just a little bit. With all that GP, I decided to spend almost 400 mil of it on some of the best possible gear for Leviathan. As far as the crystal gear goes, I was able to craft the crystal armor and corrupt the bow of Faradim with the shards I gained from episode 3 of the series. I even decided to drip out a little bit and go for the full black setup very similar to what I had on Gris Cat. Here is my full setup now for the Leviathan grind, let's get started. Leviathan was a super fun boss to do once I got the hang of it. Lots of really engaging mechanics that felt rewarding when you got them correct. Also really enjoyed letting the attacks come at you quicker as I got more experience. And I'd say the part that I enjoyed the most about the fight was towards the end, going inside the orb and then using the web weaver special attack and sometimes having over a 900 XP drop when that happens. It was just great. Now let's get into the drops. We got the first Awakener's Orb from the Leviathan grind. It is now a collection log item, which was not happening during Vordorvis, which is very nice. Glad to get that out of the collection log, so I won't get jump scared anymore if I get a new collection log. Just like Vordorvis, Awakener Orbs were extremely common at a drop rate of 1 in 53.6, and I received a lot of them. 52 kill count in and we've already gotten our second smoke quartz. If you didn't watch my loot from 100 video, I did get a smoke quartz in that video, so that's quite rare. I believe they're confirmed at this point to be a 1 in 200, so the fact that I've got two of them in 52 kill count, very lucky, but not the drop we're looking for. It is actually one of the better drops I've gotten now from the Leviathan. You raw manta rays, you get 180 if you do a non-perfect kill, but with a perfect kill, 270 mana rays, which is around 270k, a very decent drop. Our first major kill count milestone here at leviathan kill count number 100 and a pretty decent drop on explode tips i really thought that was a perfect kill so i'm not sure what i messed up there 200 kill count now doing pretty good on the drops just got the on explode tips and dragon bolts this trip but i have not seen any actual uniques so i have a feeling that i maybe rolled the unique once or twice since it is like a 1 in 96 i believe to roll the unique table i'm gonna hope i'm lucky and i'm two out of three well, that's probably one of the most valuable untradeable drops i can get a smoke quartz and an elite clue in the same drop that's don't know the odds of that but that's pretty cool rare don't know what to say this is a very good problem that i have i ran out of spaces to put my awakener orbs already sold eight of them for 22.1 mil and i think some of them insta sold so it's a little higher price than that so we'll go ahead and collect that and then we can throw our ninth one in and continue the process up to 300 kill count now and i have not seen a single thing from this boss as far as a unique the best thing i've gotten are those awakened orbs which are super nice don't get me wrong 400 kill count now and still have not seen a single unique even though it is a 1 in 96 to see unique so i have a feeling that if i wasn't two out of three when i was at 300 kill count maybe i'm two out of three now i i think i'm just on the heavy copium right now kill count number 500 here at the leviathan and still after 500 kill count i have not seen any visible uniques well that is not what i wanted to see but at least i know you can hit the rare drop table a chromium ingot which i think it just said it was selling for 600k so that is not very good but after 513 kill count i've seen my first visible unique at this boss i think we are now on smoke quartz number four well, that is a first back-to-back -back smoke quartz. That is a 1 in 200 drop rate, and I just got them back-to-back. -back. That is extremely rare. It doesn't show up here because it has stackable interfaces, and you can see there's a 2 in the chat. That is... I don't even know what to say about that. 
Kill count number 600 right here, and there it is. Unfortunately, no loot here, and the only thing we've gotten was that Chromium ingot about 100 kills ago. I guess it's nice that we've hit the rare drop table, but still, 600 kill count and only seeing one visible unique definitely doesn't feel great. We are now, again, full up on the Grand Exchange offer, so time to collect again. We do have one Chromium ingot in there. Looks like we made a 22.9 mil, not too bad, and now I'll throw this one in there. After this kill right here, I am going to be now 700 kill count with the only unique I've received so far being that Chromium ingot. That is really crazy that I've gone this far without seeing any other drops. One thing I do want to mention though, the technical ring drop rate is a 1 in 768 if I remember correctly, somewhere around there. So I've technically not hit the drop rate of the ring. Hopefully I'll see you guys in 68 kills with the ring or maybe even less than that. Let's try to go for that. Yes! 749 kill count. I wasn't recording only. I didn't realize I was in a call with my friends. We got it! 749 kill count. The Venator Vestige. I just instantly picked it up because I was getting used to it. Let's get out of here. I've made my way to the same anvil which I made the Ultor Ring. So let's go ahead, use the chisel on the Archer Ring that I purchased. And then we are going to make an icon. Now I believe I have to use the Venator Vestige on the icon. And we need blood runes, but this time I am going to remember I do have blood runes in my pouch. With the blood runes in my pouch, all we have to do is use these two on each other to create the icon. And then in the furnace with the three chromium ingots that I bought, we can now craft a venator ring. Very nice. And if we actually check the collection log here, we did get five chromium ingots during my grind to get the ultor vestige. So I've still technically gotten the six ingots and the two vestiges. So I've had six rolls on each table. So that is very nice that it is evening it out there. There is one unfortunate part about getting the Venator ring when I do get it. It is only at 75 mil. So the ring has gone down almost half of its current value, but 75 mil is still a lot of money to receive as a single drop. After a little bit of waiting, I ended up selling the Venator ring for pretty much exactly 75 mil. I did have to purchase the Archer ring for the Archer icon and the three Chromium ingots to make it. So it looks like the Venator Vestige drop ended up being about 70 mil as a drop. A very, very decent drop, all things considered, especially since I did technically get slightly lucky, not on the actual uniques, but specifically the rings. I do also have two Awakener's Orbs that I haven't collected yet, so we can collect that for a total of 80 mil. And if we now throw it in our bank, our total bank value is now up to 827 mil. We did get some clues trolls, so we may as well open those. Now we have hard and elite clues. One other thing I got from the Leviathan were these Smoke Quartz, and I also have the Blood Quartz that I got from Vardorvis. Since I did Vardorvis, they've actually added a chest where you can use your Smoke Quartz to unlock the chest. From 9 Quartz, if we throw that into the price checker, we made 1.1 mil. Very, very good. With the clue scrolls completed and opening all the Quartz, we can now go ahead and show the total loot from Leviathan which turns out to be a nice 97 mil plus the 70 mil that we made from the actual Vestige itself. So 167 mil, very decent amount of money considering the time spent, which wasn't a whole lot. I would say I was probably getting closer to 25 kills per hour and with 750 kill count, that's about 30 hours of work. Selling everything off on the loot tab, total of 35 mil because I did have some soul ruins that I didn't show in the loot tab. And then I also want to go ahead and add the money that I got from the Awakener's Orb since I was into selling those. About 55 mil there. And then 70 mil from the big drop of the episode, which is the Venator Vestige, which leaves me at 160 mil made in this episode. However, there were some slight supply costs. If we don't include the Crystal Shards that I got in episode 3 from Zolcano, then the supply costs were only about 5 mil in this episode, quite a bit less than something like Bardorvis. Did not have anywhere near as many deaths. I think I died once, maybe twice during this entire grind, as it's really not too hard to not die during a Viathan fight once you get used to it. So 155 mil made in one episode, and now if we were to throw that into the bank, it looks like our bank is now up to 827 mil. We started this episode at a bank value of 666 mil. So in total, we have made 161 mil this episode. That is really insane for a single episode. Our last episode, we made quite a bit as well. We're making a lot of money recently, which is awesome. Closing in on that goal of the Twisted Bow. In this episode, we're taking on the Whisperer in hopes to achieve the Bellator Ring, which is currently worth 160 mil. And combined with the common drops from the Whisperer, like the Awakener Orb, has the potential to bring our total bank value over 1 billion GP.
I've sold off a few items to put me up to 350 mil to purchase gear for the Whisper grind. There are a few items I really want to try out for this grind, so hopefully this is enough to afford them. I have held zero expense when it comes to buying gear for this grind. Over 395 mil I spent on this grind. I think I spent even more just buying things like the Bofa and such for the Leviathan grind, so I spent even more on the Whisper grinds. Pretty crazy. Decided to go for the Venator Bow because it's really good on the Ghost phase. I even decided to invest in the Magus Ring, probably a very unstable item with the Virtus as well. Probably not the smartest decision, but it is the decision I have made, and let's just be honest, Virtus looks absolutely sick. I can't wait to use this armor. It has 1% magic bonus, but 9% if you are using ancient magic. With this setup, the Sanguinesi Staff with the Saturated Heart, our max hit is going to be a 45, which is absolutely massive. Our Barrage max hit, since we have full Virtus, is a 40. Really, really nice stuff there. Here is the setup I'm going to start the Whisper Grime with. Now this setup will most likely change though as I become more experienced with the boss, but let's get started with this for now. First kill out the Whisper and we've already got ourselves a personal best, though a 344 isn't very good, so let's just see if we can get some decent times with this setup. I've only done a few kills now, but from what I can tell, you really don't need any food at all, so I've changed my inventory a little bit, pretty much all prayer potions, especially since I'm using the Sanguinesi staff, so it heals you about every 5th or 6th hit, so I feel very confident with this setup now. Okay, what is this drop? I didn't even know this drop exists. 10 dragon plate skirts, and they're unnoted as well, so I just have to pick them up like that. I don't have inventory space for all these plate skirts. I have to, like, drop prayer potions. That's a uh, very interesting drop. I guess that's perfect kill as well with 10 of them. 1.6 mil on a single drop, and it's not even, like, a rare drop. That is, yeah, interesting. <laughs> Well, there is the first unique of the grind, of course, on 73 kill count. I think, sure, Bodhi would love that. The Chromium Ingot, though, that's something I don't really love. But I'm very early on, so I can't complain too much. Very nice, I guess. Well, there is Chromium Ingot number 2 at 90 kill count. Don't know, again, what to say about these Chromium Ingots. Get quite a few of them, but hey, I guess we'll get them out early. Yeah, it is what it is. Hey, there's a new unique, the Shadow Quartz. I'm actually pretty happy to get one of these. I kind of just wanted one of each quartz. It's one of the main reasons I decided to do the Whisper is just to actually get the Shadow Quartz. Now I have the Shadow Scepter, I already have the Blood Scepter, and I already have the Smoke Scepter, so if I wanted to get the Ice Scepter, I'd go back to Duke, but not a huge fan of Duke, so just really happy to get this one out of the way. There's the first clue scroll of the grind, a medium clue. As with all my videos, I'm going to be doing every clue that I get. Kill count number 100, I guess the first real milestone. One thing I really, I think I'm going to like about the Whisper is in 100 kill count, I've already hit the rare drop table visibly twice, and that's not even that uncommon. The drop rate of hitting the table, I believe is like a 1 in 63 or something like that. So hitting the drop table twice within 100 kill count is very reasonable, and you should hit the drop table about once or twice every 100 kill count. It makes it a lot more bearable compared to something like the Leviathan with a 1 in 96 chance of hitting the unique table. That's a pretty quick time, 2.43, it's been a while since I've had a personal best. These times are getting pretty fast considering the setup, I don't have a shadow or anything like that, but 2.43 without it's quite nice. Hey, there is actually the first Awakener's Orb of the entire grind at 139 kill count. I did not think I'd have to take this long for Awakener Orb, given they're actually the most common Awakener Orbs out of any of the bosses at a rate of 1 in 34.5. Happy to get my first, hopefully I make up with the uh, drop rate over time, but they are still worth quite a bit of money as you can see here. And there is a very nice drop, I've gotten a few times now, but I haven't really spent the time to record it. 105 battle staffs is like the second best drop you can get behind the D-plate skirts, and you actually get them quite commonly. As I said, this is like my third or fourth time I've gotten this drop. Kill count number 200 here, and it looks like we're just going to get the normal Dragon Javelin Heads, which is a very good drop. It's over 100k in just Dragon Javelin Heads. The only two drops we've seen so far are the Chromium Ingots on the rare drop table, but that is a good thing. The fact that I am not seeing any rare drops within, I think, about last 100 kill counts means there is a good chance that I have hit the Vestige, the real big drop I'm going for, which is currently worth over 160 mil at the moment. 
Hopefully I've hit it twice, but even if I've just hit it once, which is the most likely option, I'm still very happy with that with only 200 kill count at the boss. However, after 200 kill count, there is one thing I want to incorporate into my kills, and that is the Accursed Scepter. If you're not sure what the Accursed Scepter does, it is basically the magic version of the Dragon Warhammer. As long as I accurately hit with the Scepter's special attack, it will drain the boss of 15% of its magic and defense level, which should be very helpful at the Whisper. Now the Accursed Scepter is mainly valuable just for that defense and magic reduction, but it's also just a really good hitting weapon, as with the special attack and not even using a Wilderness Monster, you could hit up to a 57, which is quite insane since the max hit of the Sang, which I showed earlier, is only a 45, and it ends up just being better DPS even without the defense reduction. So the fact that you can get about three specs per kill is really good. I've only used the Accursed Scepter now for just a few kills, but I have to say, it is quite a big difference between using the Accursed Scepter and not using the Accursed Scepter. If you can look at my kill times, I haven't gotten a new personal best yet, but as you can see here, if we just kind of scroll up, they're all pretty much around three minutes every time I get use the Accursed Scepter, only have four kills here. Sometimes without using any defense reduction or magic reduction, I would have like four minute plus kills with just bad RNG. Again, I've only done four kills so far, but so far I can just say the Accursed Scepter feels so much better. Ah, that's one of the drops I want to see. Another 10 Dragon Plate Skirts at 211 kill count. Well, there's the third drop we've seen now. Chromium Ingot number 3 from this boss. That means we have for sure hit the drop table 3 times. So this is what it is. This is around the same drop rate. And as long as we get the Vestige without seeing any more Ingots, I think I'd be happy with that. 267 kill count and we've gotten our second awakener orb of the grind that is amazing it's taken 267 kill count to get two uh, awakeners orb i may have got one like in the first 25 kill count before this video but man that's insane it's a 1 in 34.5 and this is only the second Well, I am a giant spoon, but we will take it. 270 kill count for the Belator Vestige. This drop is worth a lot of money. Sorry, I have my cat with me right now, and she just really likes to uh, press the F keys. 270 kill count for the Belator Vestige, and we already hit three ingots as well, so we basically made this thing like an Iron Man. That is crazy. That is just absolutely nuts to get this lucky. I mean, don't get me wrong, I was slightly unlucky on the other two bosses. Still, this is a spoon. This is a giant spoon. I am so happy about that. Wow, that's amazing. I am ready to make this Bellator ring. I think I have everything I need. I have the Warrior's ring, the Vestige, I even remember the 500 Blood Runes, and the three Chromium Ingots, which we got from the Whisper as well. And it's kind of interesting how the drops work. I now have nine Chromium Ingots, and I've gotten three Vestiges, so I'm like perfectly on drop rate between Vestige and Chromium Ingots. Let's get to it. I think I just have to use the Chisel on the Warrior ring. Now I have a Warrior icon, then I think I use the Vestige create the belator icon and then with the three chromium ingots oh i did forget something the uh ring mold let's go grab that I now have the ring mold so now we can go ahead and create the bellator ring there we are beautiful go ahead and wear that it has really really good stats i didn't think it's as good as it is 20 slash so you use a fang with that or a scythe and you're going to be hitting quite well and it still provides six melee strength so just slightly worse than the berserker ring which is probably why it is worth quite a bit right now if we do a little examine that is not accurate at all now that is a lot more reasonable price for the bellator ring 154 mil which is the most expensive out of the four new rings by quite a decent margin but it is also one of the more useful ones so it makes sense super happy that i've spooned this drop 152 mil and then if we add that to the bank we are now 992 mil close to a bill you know what? we're not in in this episode until we have a bill at least so i guess our first attempt to getting that bill is we did get a few clues from the grind even though it wasn't much of a grind three mediums there's always potential to hit those range of boots as we're quite dry in them unfortunately nothing there we do also have three hard clues which have a bigger potential to make more money i suppose maybe uh, 100k per clue, honestly, that is very good. And then the one elite clue, 126k, it is an elite, so I guess that's about the best I can expect. 
Now, unfortunately, the loot tracker for the Whisper isn't working great. As you can see here, it looks like if we go down to the Whisper, it only tracked 22 of my kills. Funny enough, it tracked one of my ingots, one of my uh, vestiges, and one of the two orbs I actually received during the grind. Did not receive too many of those. However, I did try to keep track of most of the loot to get the 20 D plate skirts. Uh, a few of the notable drops there. I think there are also some rune drops happen pretty uh, frequently. I know you can get soul runes quite frequently. Death runes for sure. I don't think you got blood runes, but you also get like weird chaos runes sometimes. Uh, steam runes for sure. Water runes sometimes. I kept track the best I could. Basically, this is the majority of the loot tab plus some runes. Sell off what we have and see how much we made. I have finished selling off all of the loot, or at least I think all the loot from the Whisper. We now have a 27 mil cash stack and the loot tab here is all empty along with some of the runes I talked about. So we throw that in, we're down to 992. I think we were at 993, so we actually lost a mil selling, but I guess that's kind of expected. But I was curious, I made about 180 mil from the Whisper. However, there are definitely some supply costs. With the Blood Runes from the Sanguine SC staff, the Revenant Ether and everything, it ended up being about 30k per kill in supplies, which is quite a bit. However, I did only do 270 kills, which ends up being about 8 mil in supplies. So you take that out the profit and 172 mil profit made from the Whisper, which is quite insane because I was getting close to 20 kills per hour. We'll even be, go to say in 15 kills of an hour just to be like super generous on the low side. And even with 15 kills an hour, that's like 18 hours to make 172 mil, which is about 10 mil an hour. That is insane. Yeah, there's no other word than just insane. Now we have to figure out how to turn this 992 mil into one bill, which shouldn't be too hard since eight mil is pretty easy to come by. First and foremost, I think I want to go ahead and solve the gear I was using for the Whisper since I did get full Virtus for that, plus a few other items like the Magus Ring, which is pretty unstable at the moment. Things like the Sanguine SC staff. Most of the things I bought did go up, like the Venator Bow. Actually, it looks like it's going back down. So yeah, let's get rid of this stuff fast. Here's what I ended up selling everything for. And to refresh your memory, I'll go ahead and throw up the buy offers. And I've definitely made some money some places, but I've also lost some money at some places. I'd say overall, I think I did all right. On the topic of selling things, I decided to throw away these Zarite Van Braces that I used in the last episode for the Leviathan. And I made a huge profit on these things because I bought them for like 154 mil, sold them for over 162 mil. So that's very nice. And then I just sold the Light Bear, which I also used in the last episode, which now puts our bank value even less than before. Oh no. I went to bed and I think a few of my items went up because we're now up to a 995 mil bank. Probably things like my crystal armor and the bow of Ferdin that I have. So we only have to make five more mil now to get that one billion bank value. And I think I have a way to do that. I still have over 700 crystal shards from the Zolcano grind. And with 93 herb lore, I can boost to 97 with the botanical pie and turn all of those into super combat potions. You end up making about 10 mil with 700 of them. So if I made about half, I make about five mil. However, I do need to get 93 herb lore, which I'm just off. So I think what I'll do is actually buy and clean herbs. I know that is an extremely slow way of getting herbal XP, but it's also pretty decent money. With these two torsos right here, we should get ourselves 93 herbal lore. There it is. We can now plus four boost for that 97 herbal lore for the Divine Super Combats. I already made a lot of money from the Torsto, so I'll sell those off first. A lot of price finagling, as you can see here, but I have sold off all of the Torstals for 36 mil plus a little bit extra, as you can see already in the cash stack. And yeah, 9998 mil. I've had to spend a lot more of my crystal shards than I've wanted to. I think I spent over 200 crystal shards making super combat potions. And this is hopefully the last batch I have to make. These fluctuating prices are benefiting me and they're not benefiting me. But we are at 993 mil. This is 7.6. That should be the 1 billion mark in this series. We have earned over 1 billion GP starting from 0 GP. And the twist about is about 1.3 mil right now, so 300 mil to go, which is something we can accomplish maybe the next episode or the U1 after that. In this episode, we're opening 2,000 medium caskets. So that means I'll need to invest into 50,000 eclectic implings for the clue scrolls, which should cost me in the neighborhood of 215 mil. I've got a buy offer that's starting to go through. 50,000 eclectic implings, which have a 1 in 25 chance to give a medium clue scroll. So hopefully that should give me 2,000 medium clues. 
Just got my first medium clue and one update that I've noticed that they've made since I did this last time is you can't actually open Eclectic Implings once you get a clue now so you can kind of spam click it. And what I'm talking about is when I click now and I already have a clue in my inventory it gives me a, a nice notification. So for example I guess let, let me just drop this one just in case I get multiple. Uh, I can go ahead and take the five out from my inventory and just spam click like that and I'll know for a fact that if I were to get a clue it would only open the amount that I need to get that clue. While we're completing clues, I have three goals for this episode I'd like to go over. The first being Ranger Boots. In the last clue opening, we were unfortunately unlucky with Ranger Boots, so this episode I'd really like to go on drop rate. Ranger Boots have a drop rate of 1 in 283.6 per medium casket, which works really well with the number of caskets we're doing. Dividing 2000 by 283.6 gives us a number just over 7, meaning we should expect around 7 ranger boots from that many caskets. And it will also be the first goal of the video. My second goal is pretty simple, complete the medium clue scroll collection log. In the last clue opening, we ended with 112 out of 115 log slots completed, and considering we're doing double the amount of clues, I think we should have no problem completing this goal. And the final goal for this opening is to complete a total of 100 Master Clues. We ended the last clue opening with 48 Master Clues completed, so I'd like to receive at least 52 Master Clues from the 2000 mediums I'm doing. The drop rate of Master Clues from medium clue scrolls is 1 in 30, so from 2000 clues, I should expect around 67 Masters. The reason I'd like to complete 100 Master Clues, not only is that a nice number, but at that amount of completions, you do receive a special item called the Scroll Sack. It is a purely cosmetic item, but it shows everyone that you like completing clues, which I do. Now that I've shared my goals with you, let's go ahead and speed through these completions. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, and 1,000 medium clues, 1,000 more to go. 1,100, 1,200, 1,300, 1,400, 1,500, 1,600, 1,700, 1,800, 1,900, 1,900, 1,900, and finally, 2 thousand medium caskets and just like i did with the last video i got one extra but instead since i did two thousand this time i got two extra so we have two thousand and two caskets to open before i open any of them though it's time to remind everyone that at max efficiency you can complete around 20 clues per hour which means this grind has taken me over 100 hours now i'm happy to spend as much time as i need to to provide the best content i can for everyone who watches and all that i ask in return is for you to subscribe Subscribing is completely free, it helps my videos and my analytics, and I do have a personal goal to hit 20,000 subscribers this year. It can easily be accomplished if most of the people watching this video subscribe. Now, let's open 2,000 medium caskets. Hey, there we go. That is one of the things that I wanted to see, a pink elegant skirt. Already getting one of the last three items, which is the most rare item, the elegant piece, is amazing. So now the only two items we are missing is the Ancient Mitre and the Adamant Plate Body H3. Hopefully we can see both of those within these clue scrolls. And pretty much right on cue, the first master clue scroll of the opening. And there is the second collection log item we are missing. Now we are only missing one more item, which I believe is one of the adamant plate body. I think it was H3. And there it is, the last item we needed to green log the collection log, Adamant Plate Body H3. We have only like 100 mediums in and we've already green logged. So we go and go ahead and open the collection log now. We go to clues and look at that. 115 out of 115.
Yay! The first pair of Ranger Boots of the grind. Only 200 clue scrolls in, so we are the below the drop rate of the Ranger Boots. That is super nice. 1800 to go. Ah, uh, that's what I like to see. We're only 342 in, or I guess 344 if you include the two extra I got, and we've already gotten ourselves the second pair of Ranger boots. Oh, I already- oh, I, got, I misclicked and got another pair of rangers. Oh, that was pretty funny. I got a, a master clue scroll and I misclicked and then the next one I get is ranger boots. I guess the uh, trick is to click one after you get a master and you get yourself a pair of ranger boots, so that's really nice.
About the halfway point on the medium caskets, 1000 to go, only 3 ranger boots so far, but we are only at the halfway point, so hopefully we can pick up on the ranger boots. Ah, uh, there it is. The fourth pair of Ranger Boots. A little late on this one, but we'll take it. We still have 761 to go, which is on average about three more. So that means we have a very good chance of staying on drop rate. It 
There it is. It's taken so long. I have no idea how many clues has been since my last pair of Ranger Boots. But this is only Ranger Boots number five, I believe, for the entire thing. And medium caskets to go. Let's see if I can get lucky in the last 10. Five more to go. And we have a master clue scroll. Three medium caskets to go. Two more. And we get ourselves a master clue for master number 80. The final medium casket, unfortunately. That means we have only received five ranger boots from the 2002 medium clue scrolls I have done. Yeah, if we open the collection log here, as you can see, the least boot I got was the ranger boots. All of them have the exact same drop rate, so I could have gotten eight of the ranger boots. I could have even gotten 15 total if you uh, go by all 3,000 kill count. Very unfortunate, but it is nice that I did green log this collection log in this episode. Super, super cool to finally have a green log here. With 80 master caskets and our unfortunate bad luck on the medium clue scrolls, I've got to be pretty optimistic about the master caskets. Who knows what could actually happen? Let's go ahead and start opening these master clue scrolls. There's a pretty expensive item, the Occult Ornament Kit. A very good ornament kit, 5.2 mil, 5.5 from the total clue scroll. Very nice to get. And we just hit Gilded. That is a pretty expensive Gilded piece. Gilded Dehyde Chaps, very, very cool item to hit. It honestly looks pretty cool as well. Very happy about that one. That is awesome. It's taken 49 masters, but we just got ourselves our first Mimic. Mimic has been defeated and I got a new personal best just using the Bofa. What is going to be inside? Looks like the Mimic is going to add 25 Renar weeds. Not worth a whole lot, but let's continue. We've just completed 100 total master clue scrolls, which means I get that lovely scroll sack. Let's go ahead and put that on. I never thought I'd ever have this item. Very, very cool. Over 100 masters completed now. I guess 128 when I open all of these. We've got another mimic. Mimic number two has been defeated. What's going to be inside this one? And we get ourselves third age. Uh, not exactly third age in the sense you were expecting, but we actually hit third age uh, in the third age ring. That I guess is my quote unquote first third age item. That's cool. The ring of third age. This item lets you transform into any piece of third age that you want, including like the pickaxe, which is like the most valuable. That's cool. Hitting the ring of third age. Oh, there is an expensive ornament kit, the Torture Ornament Kit. So I've already gotten the Occult one, which was worth more. I thought the Torture one would be uh, worth a decent amount as well. Four mil there. I think the Anguish one is the one that's worth a really high amount. So hopefully we can get the Anguish one as well. And apparently I just have to talk about it and I'll actually hit it. The Anguish Ornament Kit. So I think that means I've gotten all of these Zenai ornament kits because I did get the Tormenta bracelet in the 1000 medium clues video. So that is all four ornament kits now if we go ahead and open the collection log and then we go to masters here. I am already there. There is the Tormented, the Occult, the Torture, and the Anguish. And I, of course, I'm just going to get back to back Anguish ornament kits. That is awesome. Anguish ornament kit into Anguish ornament kit. That what? Back-to-back -back anguish ornament kits. I wonder what the uh, chance that of happening is. That's the best one you can get. 
10 caskets left. What are those going to be inside of them? It looks like the first one's going to be another Mimic. Another personal best at the Mimic. The last Mimic gave me a fake Third Age in the Third Age ring. Will this one maybe give me a real Third Age piece? Unfortunately, it just adds 25 Renars. Nine Masters to go. And we just hit another Anguish Ornament Kit. What? In like the past five clues have been three Ornament Kits or something. What is this? Like how many clues has it been? It's been like three clues. So 118, 120, so 117, 118, and 120 were all Anguish Ornament Kits or something like that. That is actually insane. Oh my god. I, I know I got pretty unlucky on the mediums, but the Masters are making up for it. And it turns out there is. We already got ourselves now our fourth Mimic. Yet another personal best at the Mimic with the Bofa. Please, I am begging Mimic, just add Third Age to the drop table. Just once, please. Ah, uh, no, unfortunate. 600 death runes from this Mimic. Down to five more Master Caskets. Let's see what's in them. Normal loot. And another ornament kit. Wow, this one's worth a ton. Bando's Godsword Ornament Kit. I'm assuming that's just got to be the best uh, Godsword Ornament Kits. I thought they were all worthless. Bando's Godsword Ornament Kit, 6 mil. That is a lot. I, I had no idea Godsword ones are worth that much. All right, three more caskets to go. We got ourselves a Lesser Demon Mask, which I've already achieved before. Two more. And our final Master Casket. Is there anything special inside of it? Unfortunately, there is not, but to be honest, I got pretty lucky at the Master Caskets. I don't even know what to say. Let's just go ahead and open the loot. 78.1 mil. You would think I made more money just because of how many cool drops I've gotten. But when you look at things like Ranger Boots, they're just worth so much more in comparison because it actually has a use as a best in slot item. These are mainly just ornament kits and cool items to have. But with that being said, hitting three Anguish ornament kits is insane by itself. But we've also hit Gilded, which I think is pretty cool that both times that we've opened Master Clue Scrolls, we've now hit Gilded. One with the Gilded Coif, and now we've hit a Gilded Chaps. We also hit the Bando's Godsword ornament kit, which ended up being worth around 6 mil. We hit the Occult ornament kit, which is worth about the same thing. And the Torch ornament kit, which means we've hit all these Zenite ornament kits if you include the last Master Clue Scroll opening, where we got the Tormented Bracelet ornament kit. And finally, last but not least, we did also hit the Ring of Third Age, which is my technical first piece of Third Age, though it can be seen as not really Third Age because it is from a uh, Mimic only, and it's quite a bit more common, I guess, compared to normal Third Age. Then from our mediums, which is where the real money is, 228 mil. Most of that money coming from the range of boots and the purple sweets make up a lot of it. Most of the other items aren't worth too much, but it does add up over time, just these little drops over and over again. Now that we've opened up all of the clues, it is time to sell the loot tab. A very, very expensive loot tab, as you can see here, there are the range of boots, and the most interesting drops are here at the bottom with the Anguish Ornament Kits, the Torch Ornament Kits, the Third Age, the Gilded, the Bandos Godsword Ornament Kit. I'm excited to sell it all. I decided to sell the valuable items first, and I've got pretty much everything sold, and I figured you guys would like to see me collect that first, so let's go and do that. Everything except for the Anguish Ornament Kit has been sold, but I'm pretty sure this will sell over time, so now let's go ahead and sell the rest of it. After selling all of the clue items on the Grand Exchange, we are left with 309.7 mil. Not too bad, but that is not all profit as there are some costs to be calculated, which is mainly the Eclectic Implings, so let's go ahead and go over that. The total cost of all of the Eclectic Implings was around 215 mil, and the loot that we got from the Eclectic Implings totaled to be around 67 mil. Overall, we spent around 150 mil on the clues and got back 309 mil for around 150 mil to 160 mil profit. And those numbers do add up in real time because if we go to the bank here, we have about 840 mil after selling everything. And if we throw our new cash stack in, look at that, 150 mil profit pretty much on the dot. 150 mil profit for over 100 hours of work isn't the best, but I'm still really happy about how the openings went, especially considering the master clues. Since that episode, I've gone ahead and sold off most of the major items in my bank, including the Boa Ferradin and Full Crystal to afford the gear for this episode. I also asked the community what content you'd like me to do to potentially finish off the series and grab that twisted bow, and most of you guys said next, so that's what I'll be doing. As for the gear for next, I have over one bill to work with and Osmutin's Fang, which I didn't sell off, so I'm going to try to grab a Zarite Crossbow, Missouri, and see what else I can afford after that. And I decided to spend almost 
all of my money on gear for next i got pretty much the best that i can afford i now have less than 10 mil to spend on supplies which is probably too little but like i said i really wanted to get the best i can afford and if i need more money later i can always just sell off the promoter boots or one of the items i just bought and i've now spent pretty much the rest of my money on supplies and i have a couple more potions i have to buy anyway so let's hope i make a little bit of money back on my first few next kills i've made my way to the next layer and we're geared up ready to go all of the money I've made up until this point has gone into this setup, and I'm ready to earn enough money to afford the Twisted Bow. I'm also going to be doing most of my kills at Nex with fellow YouTuber and friend Alonescape, as he also plans to make a video around Nex. To describe the Nex fight briefly, Nex has four different phases, Smoke, Shadow, Blood, and Ice, and minions in each corner of the room that correspond to each of the phases. Every time you take out a quarter of Nex's health, you have to kill the corresponding minion to move on to Nex phase. Once all four minions are defeated, Next enters a final phase which can be described as a DPS check, which once defeated, finally ends the fight and you receive your loot. Now there are a lot of annoying mechanics in between the fight that Next does, but the best thing about her is the uniques. Every kill gives you a 1 in 43 chance to receive a unique, and every unique is worth a very large amount of money. Even the least valuable unique, being the Ancient Hilt, is worth around 60 mil as of recording, and the best thing about that unique is the Hilt is the rarest drop that you can get from Nex, so you shouldn't be seeing it very often if at all. Now Alonescape and I are not very good at the game, so most of our kills will be trios or four man, but we did decide we would try some duos later on when we're more experienced at Nex. We got a kill! Let's go! Next trio! The first next kill. The MVP was a lone scape. Cause you did you hit so many rubies that time. That's why you get the MVP. About number five. I got a combat achievement. Perfect next. I got perfect next. Onyx bolts. Yeah, that is the best normal drop. And I got uh, above the amount stated on the wiki. Uh, thirty-four, and I didn't even get the MVP. Our friend got it for staying the entire time. Kill and. Oh, yeah, Onyx Bolt, it's 42 for me. That's a huge one. Got the uh, MVP. And there's 25 kill count for me. Next Master. It means I have all of the next combat achievements except for next duo, which maybe we'll get it in this video. Here. What's the first kill, though? Oh, we got, oh, we got something! I didn't even notice! Oh, we just got Zarya Van Braces. Here is the money from the Zarya Van Braces. 42.5 mil split. After getting the Zarit Van Braces, we called it a day at Nex. After the first day, I noticed the most annoying thing was getting the kill count to enter the next room, so since I'm extremely close to the elite combat achievements, I decided to go for that as it would reduce the kill count required from 35 to 30. There is the just like that combat achievement. There is the pray for success combat achievement. This should be two combat achievements here. I think it's the zero prey and the can't touch me. Very nice. I believe the only ones we're missing now are the kill count requirements. This should be the 10 kill count combat achievement. Well, this was the first uniques I've gotten here from Barrows and I got a double chest. That's a pretty interesting, but probably the worst items I could see. Uh, but we do get the back to back. So we got Torx hammers, Aram's hood, and now Aram's staff. Not too bad, I guess. Wow, back three back or back four back item, depending on how you want to look at it. Still not a very valuable item though. 25 kill count. That's all of the Barrow's combat achievements completed. There's the combat achievement for not taking any damage. Now I just have kill count requirements. There is the 10 kill count requirement. And here is the final kill for the elite combat achievements completed. So let's go ahead and claim our rewards. So I think I've completed a tier. And there we are. We get ourselves an XP lamp, Gamos Hilt, which now teleports us to the Inferno, as well as already the infinite Trollheim teleports. But most importantly, we now only have to get 30 kill count instead of 35 kill count to enter the next layer, so that should probably save us a lot of time. With the combat achievements completed, it was time to head back to Nex. Oh. And cannonballs. Both of those were green for me. At this point, Alon and I were having trouble finding a consistent third person for Trio Nex until we found this guy who was as dry as Mother Teresa in his own words. So I had some hope that a drop was coming soon. I think it's close to dead. There we go. Oh, we got something. That's 17 mil. 17 mil. Honestly, since the Van Braces was third, like 42 mil split, 17 actually isn't that bad. It's like half of it.
Wow, 19.3 mil for an Ancient Hilt trio? That's actually a lot better than I thought it'd be. After the Ancient Hilt, I decided to do a few more kills while I got 97 defense, but no drops so I decided to head off early. However, while I was offline, Alone got something I don't think either of us expected. Oh, someone got the pet! Oh, I did! What? I got the pet! <laughs> yep, while I was away, Alonescape actually got the next link pet. It is a 1 in 500 for anyone to get it per kill, but for a specific person, it becomes a lot rarer. And the unfortunate thing is the person he was doing it with was like 5,000 next kills without the pet, so it was very unfortunate for that person, but very fortunate for Alonescape, and I'm super happy at least one of us got a pet. The next day though, I was ready to grind out a lot of necks. 100 kill count at necks, and it looks like we get Onyx Bolt tips. Not a terrible drop, but hopefully we are closing in on a unique sometime soon. Look. Oh, we got something. Let's go. Yep, at 103 kill count for me, we got ourselves another pair of Zarite Van Braces. These Zarite Van Braces ended up being another 42.5 mil split, which put my total cash stack now up to over 100 mil finally from Nex. It's been a while at Nex, but we have finally hit 100 mil cash from Uniques, and we need about 300 mil to afford the Twisted Bell. Again, very shortly after getting the drop, we headed off, but the next day, Alonscape and I really wanted to try to get a successful duo kill, and after one failed attempt, this happened. Oh, hey, big, hey, big, hey, big. Dude. Just stay alive, just stay alive. I'm trying, but I'm gonna that. Oh my god, come on, thanks, back. Missed. Yes! You got it, yes! For, oh let's god, go, dude. I missed the Same. Oh, Hello. let's Next go. Achievement. Second try, that's insane. On our second real duo attempt, we just barely scraped it by with seven hit points and zero prayer points left. I don't know if it could have been any closer, but we did get it. After completing our first next duo, we decided to send even more duos, and it felt like every kill that we were doing was getting more and more clean, up until the point that we were joking about doing two kill trips after getting a supply drop from next. Unfortunately though, we didn't see any drops as a duo, so we did decide to head back to trios. And unfortunately, the trios were very much like the duos, as we didn't see any drops for I believe in an 8 hour session that day. After the 8 hours, Alonescape got off, but I still had some energy left in me, so I figured, if Alonescape can get a drop while I'm offline, maybe I could do the same. And I wish I was making this up, but the next kill after Alonescape got offline, this happened. Good luck to these guys. There is no way. One kill after Alonescape got off their way. Torva full helmet in my name. That is like a 90 mil split. That is insane. Torva full helm ended up being that 90 mil split like I talked about. And just like that, we were only 100 mil away from the Twisted Bow. I sent a couple back to backs with the same group, but as expected, didn't really see anything. So I went offline to make sure I was ready to send some more necks tomorrow. Keep in mind, although I recently got a Torva full helm, Alonscape has gone over 8 hours without seeing a drop, so we were hoping for something, and only 3 kills into the day, this happened. We got it! We actually got it! I did not expect that that early. Yes, that, that, that's done. That's, that's the Twisted Bow. Oh, let's get out of here, we'll split from the Niho Horn. It's going to be 120, that's it? 123-6666. There we are. And if we go ahead and put that in the bank. Oh, I gotta take out my uh, Zarite crossbow that I put. And if I put everything into the bank, I'm up to a 1.5 billion bank with that split. Now that we finished next, I want to go ahead and show off the loot to you guys. From 145 track kills, I got a Torva helmet and all of this beautiful loot right here. I did receive one Nihil Horn, not my name, two... Zari Van Brace is not in my name, and one Ancient Hilt not in my name, but you guys saw that throughout the video. Also killed 761 Spiritual Mages for a kill count to actually go into next, and in that kill count I completed a full Ancient Ceremonial set. I did not complete it multiple times because I only got one gloves and one boots. I did get an extra Ceremonial Legs from the minions, I got one mask from Umbra and one Legs from Glacies. 
Now that I have at least what I think to be enough money to afford the twist about, it is time to sell off the bank and I went ahead and put all the big expensive items in. It looks like 1.16 bill, which is about correct. Go and collect that, 11.48 after tax, and we throw that and we're at 1.49. So it looks like uh, we lost 10 mil in there somewhere or at least close to 10 mil. So let's go ahead, selling outs because 14.57 actually isn't even enough to afford the twist about. I have sold off everything in my bank that I could find that is tradable. And now we have 37, 337, 124 mil. Throw that in. And we are now back up to that 1.5 bill mark. But that is not exactly 1.5 bill in cash, as you can see. 1494. However, that is definitely enough to afford the twisted bow. So I'm going to put an offer in. I checked GE Tracker, and I think this is a pretty decent price. 1.481 billion, 250k, and an extra 13 GP to try to one-up someone. I hopefully this buys because it does not leave us a lot of money to work with. It looks like we have an extra 13.4 mil to buy supplies for the challenge mode chamber of Xerix. Now that we hopefully have a twist about, assuming that this will buy over time. Check the chat, everyone. Finished buying twisted bow. We have officially gone from zero GP in my bank all the way to 1.5 billion to afford one of, if not the best item in the game, the Twisted Bow. There it is. I missed the Twisted Bow so much since I've started this series. I've not used it since. Such a strong item, and we're going to see its full potential at the challenge mode chambers of Zerg here in a minute. Now that we have the Twisted Bow, we have 13.8 mil plus the Amulet of Blood Fury that I used for next to buy the gear for the challenge mode chambers of Zarek. I've made some purchases and here is the gear setup I'm going to go for. The melee weapon is going to be the Zamorakian Hosta. I decided to go for the Hosta since it does have a crush, stab, and slash option which is going to be very nice because there is Tecton and Vasa which I need crush and stab for and it's overall just a very good weapon compared to like the tentacle whip. It's only three max hits plus it gives some prayer bonus and even gives a little bit of defense bonus not that it really matters too much but it is very nice. Mage weapon, pretty obvious, the Toxic Trident, just the best one I can afford. I think the next best weapon would be like all the way Sang. And of course, I can't just do it with a Twisted Bow, decided to buy the Blowpipe. Other than that, I got an Occult because it is just insane mage damage for the price. I got the Berserker Ring because I do not have a good weapon for the Lightbearer. Speaking of, the spec weapon I'm going to be using is actually the Bone Dagger, which is a very interesting one because you can only get one spec initially and it has 75% spec. So it is going to be a very big challenge. I've never done a challenge mode chambers of Zarek without using a either BGS or Dragon Warhammer. So this is going to be a first. And other than that, I think I am going to go with a void setup as you can see here. So if we throw on the Hosta, the Berserker Ring, and the Dragon Boots, this is basically what my melee setup is going to look like. Range setup should look something like this. And then my magic setup should look something like this. And after buying all these supplies I'm going to need for the challenge mode, I realized I had just enough money to afford a dragon pickaxe since they aren't worth too much nowadays. So now, let's get into our first attempt of the challenge mode chambers of Zarek. My gear setup feels extremely wonky, but I do think I am ready for my first attempt for the challenge mode chambers of Zarek. Let's see how I can go. The initial goal for the challenge mode was to complete the raid deathless and under the time limit. However, after a few attempts at Tecton, I realized completing it within time would either take really good RNG, a lot more skill than I currently have, or some sort of gear upgrade that I couldn't afford. So I decided to accept that this raid may take a while, but I still wanted to complete the raid deathless. I know most of you probably don't want to see the full raid, so I'll skip to Ulm and leave the full raid in the description for those of you who want to see it. I hope you guys enjoy my completion of the challenge mode chambers of Zarek with a twist of bow.
there it is. The challenge mode Chambers of Azeric completed with Deathless solo. Unfortunately, it was not under time, but we did get 61,000 points, which means we might have a unique. I don't know if I would get a collection log pop up. I don't think I will if I have a unique because I didn't get one when I got the Twisted Bow. Let's go ahead and see did we get lucky on the challenge mode completion? Unfortunately, it looks like it is a white light, but we did get that challenge mode chambers as Zeris completed. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the series as much as I did making it. Hope to see you all in the next series I have planned. And if you have any ideas for future series you'd like to see me do, let me know as I love seeing your ideas. I hope everyone watching has a great day and I'll hopefully see you all very soon. Later.